Hello and welcome everyone to the second episode of TechCast, where I have a special guest on today who's both a GT winner and a commission painter known as Matt Estrada. Please introduce yourself. I think you did a great job. That about sums me up from a 40k standpoint. Uh, big into AdMech, really trying to tear apart the codex, figure out what there is to get. Um, painting a bunch of different armies right now, and my own AdMech is struggling. So uh, trying to balance all that is a, is a, it's a good time. For sure. Excellent. So I know in the past you played a few different armies. Um, you mentioned, especially with your GT win, I believe you were playing uh, Raven Garden, I believe. Can you, that is correct. Can you tell us a little bit of the different armies you played and why you kind of transitioned to AdMech with the 9th edition codex? So we're always going to play Imperium because they're the good guys and we only play the good guys. Um, so no matter what, we, we'd like to stick in the Imperium family. Um, I started out with started out with AdMech at the beginning of 8th, and they were... Uh, I did not want to play Call plus Robots. Um, and at that time, that was kind of the... the if I'm remembering correctly, that was kind of the meta for AdMech. Um, and Soup was super strong. And so, like, I mean, this Skatari are, are insane right now. But back then, it was like, why would you not just run Guardsmen? And uh, so I was like, all right, I'll... I'll Pick up some guard, picked up some more guard, and picked up some more guard, and picked up some custodes, and again, everything's souping like crazy. So then picked up the Smash Captains for Blood Angels when their codex dropped. So we really just played um we played a lot of Imperial Soup. I I got uh uh forty second or fifty second, I can't remember at LVO with Smash Captains, a knight, and guard. And this was in the uh the ridiculous age of the Castellan. So we didn't run the Castellan or the Crusader because we're always just trying to be a little off meta. Um, so that was that experience. And they, they, they cut soup out from under us, which was rightfully so. They cut out CP farming, which was, again, a good call. And so I switched over to, to Blood Angels, uh, jumped back to Custos, just, just, just trying to feel out what was, uh, I don't want to say meta chasey, but it could have been, been a little meta chasey. Um, settled on Raven Guard at the end of eighth, and that's when we got the GT win with a with a a list that only featured three Centurions. Just for the record, only three. We didn't lean on them like like some people. Um, and then ninth dropped, and and Admex. I've just had my sights on Admex since Engine War. I feel like the the model line is just incredible. The rules are fun. Uh, the ponies, like the the ponies and the uh. Airplanes and the D-Day transport just made me uh, really, really go back to AdMech and, and, and I'm enjoying it a lot. Awesome. And uh, since you kind of have some experience with souping and everything else, do you think there's any capability for souping in the future for AdMech or do you think that's pretty much gone? <sighs> I, I, I don't know how you would soup AdMech. Um, I, just, I, I just don't know. I don't know how you do it. You, you would lose... Um, you would lose the mechanicals and the uh, mechanicals and the doctrina. doctrina. So you would still get the only thing I can think of would be a Ryza twenty man pre spawn just to land and make an eight inch charge and kill whatever. But like other armies do it just as well. Um, I'm a big fan actually of the Metallica House Raven. Hmm. I think that that's not bad soup. Um there be any potential so in the past um we saw much less but we saw a little bit of like sisters uh for the melee components and then we saw some like castlins i guess now it would be iron striders versus castlins uh with mortifiers because mortifiers didn't really benefit from holy orders and then castlins didn't really need a lot of the uh, stuff that they would get from potentially right you know dog, uh doctrines or mechanicals but nowadays you know obviously I'm just trying to think on what would be what what can afford to lose. Doctrina are insanely powerful. Uh, Canicles are are pretty good. They're just not on unless your Mars are not on much. I'm just trying to think the bet like stooping would mean that uh, it's just tough. Yeah. Uh, especially especially with other armies just being really well rounded. Like Sisters New Codex is very well rounded. I don't know what weaknesses they need to shore up. Um, Space Marines are fine. I just think we just are better than Space Marines right now, though, so I don't know what you'd want to soup in. Um, 
Yeah, yeah I, I I think of Metallica. I think of Metallica. House Raven Night is still fine. Uh, House Raven has some has some pretty spicy stuff to work with. Um, but yeah, I, I just I don't think Soup is just is, they're they're. I mean, clearly Games Workshop wants it to go away. Um, yeah, which makes sense. And, I mean, it, it it does create a lot of issues in the sense that um. Yeah, it's super hard to balance. Yeah, plus, it's super hard to balance. Yeah. Yeah, plus other armies don't get any access to it. So like something like Necrons is just starved for choice when it comes to that kind of thing. So I can I can definitely see what that is. What would you say? What would you say is the best knight to kind of soup in from House Raven? I'm a big, massive fan of the Crusader with the battle cannon. I I I, I don't know. I think uh, I I think you can get some play with uh, that. The Forge World Knight is obviously just amazing. Uh, Magara, Magara, something like that. Um, I also don't think it's insane to think of doing the War Dogs to do triple War Dogs. Uh, run up the table. Um, I don't think you'll win a GT with it, but I think you can put a lot of pressure on people with, uh, if you're going like a vehicle heavy ad mech and now you add three melee threats that just are actually pretty not bad for their points. Um, I, I think, uh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. one, one thing I was thinking about, cause there's one thing that I saw a lot, um, kind of pop up on the radar with top four finishes was, um, Knight's list that used ad mech to, not necessarily be a backbone to it, but it was it was very much a knight's list that included a detachment of say three units of our of of uh, raiders or a that was before the codex, I think. Yeah, yeah. That so that, that was, was when they had that's when they had the broken stratagem to run away and you auto fail your charge. Yep. So I, I don't know. I twenty seven dogs is still okay. The problem is that two wounds makes them uh, not not broken. <laughs> yeah. Um. Because a heavy bolter now just goes, Doop, and you just lose, you know, you just pick them up. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I was thinking because of the low cost, and it not, doesn't necessarily have to be dogs, but it could be, you know, Sicarians or something of that nature, something that's low cost and just kind of able to provide knights a little bit more board presence and mobility, considering that seems to be usually what they have the most difficulty with, is that um, they kind of have that, they kind of have a lack of being able to kind of spread out as much as some armies. Yeah, I mean, men's squads of rangers could do that too. Like, the the rangers still still pop again. Metallica rangers that can move and shoot yep. still do the business. Um, and Mech have really good uh, action monkeys just because their basic troops are way more durable than eight points a model, yeah. and can can action and shoot with a warlord trait. Um, yeah, I, I think there's some play there. I think. Uh, We'll see, because I know that knights were doing cute things against uh, Dark Eldar. Um, I just don't know how knights deal with sisters, and sisters are going to be all, uh, everywhere. Um, that's a big, uh, that's a big variable because we did see a little bit of um, chaos. Well, it would be like chaos knights and uh, thousand sons and like Mortarian. So I can definitely see that kind of going a little bit more to the sideline. Now that we're seeing sisters and even Admech as the new codex is coming out, um, what would you what would you say is uh, speaking of sisters? What would you say is the probably the worst matchup for Admech overall? I think we have an amazing matchup against sisters, um, simply because the, our hordes are just. I think our hordes are better than their hordes, um, and they're. I mean, they've got Vol as a house. They have some mortal wound stratagems, but we have mortal wounds denial. Um, I, I'm trying to think. I, the meta, the meta hasn't quite sunk in out for sisters, but those two up saves, we can just kind of on the shieldy girls, we can cut through with just a way to fire. It's not sisters. Um, demons we melt because of Vanguard, which is why I think two squads of twenty is in every list just to gatekeeper out all those nerds. Um. Hmm. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, I've heard from a few people that might have been sisters just because of Meltas, but even then I feel like we just have so much output that it's... And we have so many... The problem is also um, that I think when asking a question like that is, depending on what Forge World you choose, your matchups change drastically, so... A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Like, I like... That's why I'm really gravitating towards Lucius, is that other Horde matchups... What do other Horde matchups do? They shoot a lot of one-damage shots. And I think with between orcs obviously being a horde on the horizon, sisters becoming a horde army, we're trying to take two blobs of 20. I mean, 
what is the sisters 11 points a model just doesn't i don't think they hold a candle to lucius uh rangers or vanguard either one um i mean we straight up just deny cover put them on fours and go all right here's 70 dice good luck yeah i mean um, they're they're like our basic units are probably one of the strongest in the game i would say uh, yeah and that's why like yeah i'm just like struggling to make a list and not just go why don't i just take a hundred skatari again <laughs> and still have over a thousand points to play with yeah, so, um, I think our worst matchup is. It's not, I mean, Death Guard's a little slow. Um, well, let's, let's say for Lucia specifically in this situation, because um, obviously, again, it would change every Forge World, but since you play like Lucius, um, if you were afraid of facing something like across from you on the table. You know, I don't want to play against Dark Angels. Huh. Why, why I don't. I, I think they have, a, they have a lot of multi damage shots. They have a lot of, I mean, uh, a Talon Master. Uh, I think they ignore cover with a bunch of stuff, uh, which is which is pretty important. I think for, uh, I always bring the Firepoint Telemetry Cash Warlord trait to give a cover save to somebody. They they shoot a bunch. Most of, some of those are heavy bolter shots. So your ponies just get picked up. Um, they're super fast. They move. They uh, they pack enough multi meltas to actually just pop your planes and chickens turn one um and it's just hard to screen out against them and then they just have um i mean inceptors can go can just cut minus three cuts right through your lucius warlord trait or i'm sorry your um plus the save and uh your uh, ignore, yes thank you your your ignore minus two ap uh low uh uh holy order so like you just I just don't feel like they are if they get first turn I feel like you'll get pinned in um and I just I feel like yeah I, I just don't I don't know how I'd feel comfortable against that and their uh their troops are T their their inceptors and bikes are like T5 which we really want to go punch something that's T4 cuz then we make it T3 and now we wounded on fours but going from T5 to T4 doesn't do anything for us offensively uh, in terms of just like throwing a bunch, like I have had good success just charging 20 Vanguard and uh, five Marines and, you know, beating down on them with, because uh, they, sh- they punch back at one damage. Uh, so we're getting, we're getting Space Marine saves against them. And they're minus one strength, so they're wounding us on fours. Um, it's really hilarious. Um, yeah, I had, uh, I played a game today against a Chaos player and 10 Terminators with Lightning Claws charged Lucius. Vanguard in cover, so we uh, set to defend or whatever the one where you get plus one to attack is or plus one to hit. Yeah, I think that's set to defend. So, right, so we we set the defend in the terrain. He comes in, he swings. We ignore his AP on lightning claws. He can only wound me on fours. Um, I am in the right doctrine, so we have a uh, a two up in cover, and it's just like Ugh, like, and then punch back at at wounding him on fours as Skatari. Jeez. Could spend one, could spend one CP to make it threes by going up to strength four. They're just, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. Like Vanguard are my, uh, are my favorite unit, I think. So, so uh, speaking of that game, since you, uh, you said you played uh, two test games today. Only got one, but yeah, it was a little like dojo kind of setting. So we watched, I watched uh, some Harlequins, some Sisters, and some Dark Eldar just to kind of kind of poke at their minds. They're, they're pretty good players, so got a, got a good feel for it. Um, and then played against a Chaos list and uh, with uh, 20 Noise Marines, 20 Terminators, um, some some me- some mean stuff, man. Those Noise Marines are, are very good with a plus one damage uh, stratagem for one CP. That was brutal. Okay. And what kind of, uh, I guess, what would you, if you had to describe your list, I mean, obviously you have a bunch of Vanguard in there. But what did you run uh, in comparison? I to? I only I mean I'll go my list is pretty straightforward for an admech list two marshals with with various uh, warlord traits and relics two manipulus one low guy one artisans with various relics and warlord traits uh, forty rangers twenty vanguard that's going to switch around I think to forty vanguard in the future a uh, big old brick of rust dockers and a transport just to keep people off my back and they worked super good big fan um three men squads of raiders just to run up the board hold objectives kind of annoy people double bomber 
And then a unit of four breachers, which is just going to get subbed out now for more Skatari. Uh, four chickens of Laz. And uh, sterilizers to, to get, uh, to get uh, Oculus data. Oh, okay. Yeah, so what, what did you think of the Sterilizers? Because I think Sterilizers and Sky Stalkers are maybe a unit I'm ignoring uh, the most and maybe uh, to my own detriment. No, no, no. Sky Stalkers are the right call. Ignore them. Um, for sure. Not a fan. Uh, their arc grenades used to be pretty good. They're, now it's a stratagem that might do two mortal wounds. Not, not super big. Sterilizers are good. The problem that I'm having is I don't really know what secondary actions I want to take. Um, have you been playing? Have you played a lot of games with the Oculus data? The uh, new scram, new, new scramblers, as everybody calls it. Yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't really gotten any games in yet with the new uh, stuff. All right, so new scramblers, because of the way it's laid out on the board, is you can't do it within six inches of another table quadrant, right? Hmm. So that means that there's a twelve-inch dead zone in the middle where you can't get to. So it used to be hop out or land from the skies, Oculus data, or scramblers. Hop to another quadrant, Oculus data, or scramblers. Hop to another quadrant. You cannot do that now. It's too far. It's 12 inches. Because you, you, you can't be wholly within one table quadrant and then get to another table quadrant. The, the math just isn't there. People aren't realizing that Oculus data's uh, window is smaller than you think. Because you have to be wholly within six inches away from every other table. It's better visually <laughs> to explain it. Yeah, uh, no, I, I but, know what you're saying, because you have to move in like a L shape, so you can move from one quadrant yeah. to the other really easily, but... Uh, not in one, not in two one. turns. Not in two turns. Yeah. If, I Oculus, if I Oculus Data Quadrant 1, turn 2, there is not a, there, unless I'm in the movement doctrine, doctrina, which is just suicide, mm -hmm. um, I can't get there. And so it's like, okay, do I really want to take Retrieve Oculus Data? Not really. Um, okay, so what are my options? Um, I really like, uh, they're really good just to land and just kind of cause problems. And they're, they're strength four minus one auto wounds. Ignoring cover is exactly what I want against sisters. It's really what I want against other ad mech. Um, it's even fine against Marines. And then you just, you get into melee with people and they do a surprising amount of, amount of hurt. And they have that amazing stratagem where you can't fall back against them. And people forget it's written in small, tiny print. They can uh, charge after falling back. Yeah, <laughs> and they have a lot of stats yeah. for what they for what they cost. Yeah, and, and it's just like, and it's just one of those things where it's like charge after falling back. So like they can, I'm I'm even okay if you're feeling like a little wild boy to put them in a transport turn one, have them pop out, move. You know they're 15 inches now because they hop out of the transport. Go and just start being a nuisance. Um, you can definitely use them, kind of how people use rust stalkers. The problem is that their wings are really fit, their wings take up a lot more space. It's hard to kind of fit them in places. Um, but I think five should be in every list as a as a keep you honest deep threat. Um, just to be like, all right, uh, we found a hole in your list. Now you have to deal with these flamers that are fifteen inches and Lucius, and can land and and have a have a nice save and be be a little more defensive. Five of Envol is not a joke. Um, really helpful. Yeah, no, Man, they just do a lot. <laughs> All these units are just kind of pushed. <laughs> like, yeah. So I, I'm a big fan of the sterilizers, um, just because. Yeah, they they land, they get they get an aggressive amount of attacks. Um, they can, uh, and the, the charge in which they turn, in which they fell back, to me is very very strong. And people yeah, forget. Exactly. That. I was actually people looking at them uh, before we start. And I was thinking. What could I do? Let's say if I get them into like Agrippina, where uh, they get the extra minus one AP, because all of a sudden that goes to minus two. But I don't know. That, that seems a little cute. But they have so much mobility now, especially with uh, all the different ways of making your units more mobile and move around the table and everything else. Um, so there's definitely. And there's a like question. That. Yeah, and there's a question of the stratagem is going to get FAQ'd or not. If they will be able to land and do actions, and then fly up in the same turn. Uh, rules as written. Rules is written. It looks fine uh, <laughs> as of right now, but it, it is that intended? I I'm not sure. That gets, that gets changed. Um, it's just totally uninteractable. Like you just don't get to interact with it. That can't be right. That yeah, can't be right. There's a few things like that that you look at. I, I think it's also like the manipulus can the way it's worded. I believe it can still stack its ability on one unit, which is a little uh, ridiculous. It can for the shooty ones. 
because those are carbine are I think that those are carbines. Um, I don't think it can for the sterilizers. Oh, no, no, I don't mean on the sterilizers, but I just mean in general. That was just another one of those abilities where I think it, the way it was worded. I don't. Let me grab the codex here real quick. Um, a galvanic arc and radium weapons. And yeah, I think it didn't have like a limitation or something on it. You could use it more than once on the same unit. Yeah. Anyway, those uh, are full shut. They're full shut. Shit, carbines. which is. I mean, they they can shoot in which they fall back, but the problem, I just, I don't, yeah, I don't see the sky stalkers being particularly great. I mean, it's yeah, it, no. it's interesting because they can deep strike have within enough. range of half range, but we have enough horde clear. We don't need more horde clear. Um, I mean, like sky stalkers just land and they can just kill characters. They're just like, oh, that's a cute, you know, Eldar character you have. Oh, hey, that's a space marine captain. We can take away his cover and hit him on and force him on three up saves. Um. Not bad. I'm a big fan of them. Um, they're uh, for 95 points. They give you reach. They give you. They keep your opponent honest. I think that they they're, they're going to be in most of my list moving forward. That yeah, makes sense. I mean, I can definitely see them being a very powerful unit. And then again, I can I say that kind of about every unit because everything. Yeah, so good. 95% of our units are very powerful. Yeah. yeah. Especially when you see things like, you know, again, Elfield Traders, Rust Stalkers going from very fringe playable to being. Oh very my gosh, Rust Stalkers are Rust Stalkers are so helpful. Oh yeah, they're absolutely they, they, they just keep your opponent honest. They're like, oh, I would like to charge. You know, your your line. You're like, okay, go for it. I'm gonna hop out of my transport. Eight inches of move. Um, going through dense terrain. No minuses to the charge. And then they just get into combat, and you're like, all right, you're a T4 Space Marine, you're just in big trouble. Or you're, you're a T5 Death Guard, let me spend one CP and go up to wound you on threes. Um, I mean, they get to go to Strength 6 almost. They get to go to Strength 6 on demand. Uh, big, I'm, a big, I'm a big fan of the Blades. That's, that's how, I would, how I would run them exclusively. Yeah, the two, the two Blades, I think that seems to be the consensus on that one. Um, yeah, they they turn to Blunders. doesn't do much. No, and, and they have this fancy little word called core, which means that your Skatari Marshal is just like, hey guys, uh, re-roll, re-roll, I'm a captain and a lieutenant, just keep keep that blunder and up. Exactly. Um, yeah, super that's... strong. <laughs> you know, we, have pro- we probably have the longest command phase just to all of the abilities we can stack with it. Yeah, I'm making a flow chart. I just had like, because I forgot, because you stack, and then the fact that we can take some traits on Rangers and Vanguard, or Rust Dockers for that matter. Oh, yeah. Um, I wouldn't suggest them the rest stalker because they're in the transport for the start of the turn that you normally want to activate them. So they will not get the command phase. But I think, uh, I mean, man, I think I like almost every one of the Skatari warlord traits. I they're think all, I took, they're all very good. Um, it, I think I took three today. Um, yeah. Whenever I see someone post a list nowadays, you just see all the extra traits and everything they took. And it's just like a minus six CP before you even start the game and everything, <laughs> which is a fine way to spend yeah. CP. Like, I mean, how much CP would you spend to fall back and shoot And most in sisters codex? They can do it for one CP. So let's say that's the standard, right? Oh, uh, so once you save so one, of the course of the game. Yeah, yeah. One CP to fall back and shoot. That sounds like I'll just put that on a warlord trait. Um, I don't think the fighting first is valuable just because I don't think fighting first is very good um, compared to fighting last, which we can do with a relic. Um, really big fan of the treated as light cover and the infantry get an additional plus one. So you can, you can be pretend Mars on your chickens and just give your, your chickens uh, cover, hmm. um, which is super strong. And the Battlesphere uplink is okay. That's the one that allows you to ignore penalties for heavy and assault. But there's that relic, the remnant of the Technomancer, which does all below six skill penalties, and I think that one's just better. Yeah, and there's also the one that lets you roll three dice, I believe, for uh, charges and re-roll. You can re-roll the dice. Ah, okay. Um, the problem is you have to do that in your command phase, and a lot of times your rust stalkers aren't out there. Yeah, um, I'm not. I'm not finding myself even trying to force any long bomb charges. I guess you can do that if you'd like to do the uh, dragoons. But dragoons move enough. I'm never like, oh man. I'm like, if I'm trying to get like a seven in charge of the dragoons, I'm just saving a CP point for it, right? Yeah, um, makes sense. 
Where the only thing I could think of for this one would be I'm deep striking a or I'm I'm Luciusing Solar Flaring Vanguard up the board. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And I'd yeah. like and I'd like them to make a nine inch charge and then just tie out the entire army. But then it's like I would just rather spend the CP. Um, so that's the only one I'm a little little iffy on that one and the uh, fight first one. But like the action without failing, it's super strong. Uh, the move and shoot heavy is super nice because pe- the ranger stratagem's two CP. You won't use it every single turn, in my opinion. Um, so just ignoring the heavy penalties is kind of cute. And program retreat is just like ugh, fall back and shoot, gross. <laughs> yeah, that's an incredibly powerful ability for uh, being able to take it as a relic for one command point, especially when it works with data tether and everything else. And you, it was like all the dragoons on the other side of the field. I like you, or uh, sorry, chickens on the other side of the field. Please fall back and shoot. Yeah, it's sure. essentially free stratagems every single turn. For yeah, absolutely. that's that's an excellent way to view it. That's yeah. an excellent way to view it. So each one potentially gives you five CP of savings per game, and then you you think about it as three or four. Or whatever yeah, I, I I think average average you save about two two C two three CP. I mean, fall back and shoot is just super strong. Like, and this allows you and Lucius to have two units get tied up, and you solar flare one out, and the other one gets fall back and shoot, and your opponent goes. I denied you mathematically a hundred plus shots, and you're like, mm, I'm gonna spend zero CP and just just get them anyway. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's <laughs> brutal. So if you had to, let's say if you had to come up with, um, or not not come up with one, but uh, if you were thinking about the most heretical list you want to build, let's say you want to build something that's kind of very out there or something that's kind of under the radar, what is something you would like to make work if you could? Oh man, I would. I really like the idea of thirty rust stalkers and three boats with the um the metallican. This is probably a metallic metallica with the metallican lung, and so you pop out and you're like, "Hello, um, these are my friends, and they're gonna mortal wound you." Um, I think I don't know. I'm a big fan of rust stalkers. I think um, I think the castell. I mean, I think it'd be cute to make castellan robots work. I just don't think that's possible. Um, priests are okay. Um, the, I mean, the biggest meme list I can think of is literally just just 120 Skatari. <laughs> and you and again, that's that's not even that's about half your list. Um, you still have a, I mean, it's 170 per brick with all their upgrades times five. Um, so that's only 850 points. It's, it's I'm sorry. Points. Times five. <laughs> that's kind yeah, of surprising. Yeah. No, yeah, I mean one. Yeah, it's one seventy. Uh, then let's say we want to run like six, seven, seven bricks of that. It's only a thousand one hundred ninety points. Throw in a marshal, another marshal, a manipulus with a logos, and a manipulus with artisans. You still have five hundred points to play with. And your opponent, I promise you, your opponent just doesn't have enough shots to 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 cover it. And you just melt whatever is in line of sight that's infantry. Um, big fan of that. Uh, I don't know. I like I like the D Day boats. I think the D Day boats are hilarious with uh, rust stalkers and uh, even infiltrators. I'm I'm okay on infiltrators with the goads. Um, I've just been finding that I've just been going second almost every game, and so if I'm forward deploying the infiltrators, I just die. Um, they're not. Uh, they're not. They're good. not not resilient, even with the no re rolls, which is super super cool. Um, they're just not. They're just not quite there. I don't think. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, because they do. They do have a reasonable save. I mean, you can get it up there, and then they have the invulnerable. You, you, but... you can definitely get it up there. The pro. So my thought process is, um, I don't want to get charged turn one. I don't want my opponent to have any fight phase turn one. And if I de- forward deploy them, there's a good chance that they do get a fight phase out of whatever unit they want. Um. And that's just not, I don't know, it's not conducive, I guess. Because um, you don't, you also, not scoring primaries turn one really makes the forward deploys, in my opinion, not as, I'd rather have the Rangers, I'd rather have the Raiders that move, right? Mm-hmm. So you can decide where to go. You can say, oh, I'm going second, let me hide behind this rock three inches away. Whereas infiltrators, you got to commit. And it's and their bases are, are a little bigger. I think they're on forties. Um, they could be thirty twos. I could be lying, but they they feel kind of chunky. My original prototype list had two units of five infiltrators to screen out, 
but I'm just finding that I don't need to really screen out. I can take punches with uh, Lucius Skatari, hmm. and I'd rather have the, I'd rather have the boat in reserve. The boat just chilling with the rest stalkers, saying, "Here's I have an 11 inch threat range, plus charge is really strong. Eight inches, eight inches of movement rest stalkers is no joke." It's true. Um, <laughs> have you ever tried using potentially the forward deploy as um, an attempt to guess? quickly capture um the oculus scans or anything like that or i just don't i don't value the actions that much i guess i mean i don't know maybe maybe the pros are saying differently but say i'm just not finding action secondaries to be super crucial i guess um i've been i just like i always always take um stranglehold i think stranglehold's super good uh, especially with raiders, you just go out, zip it, grab it. Um, I'm finding that that my opponent normally gives me a pretty decent one between you know assassinate, bring it down, no prisoners. What you can also do is do while we stand, we or I'm sorry to the to the last. Let me get it right. <laughs> um, and nominate nominate um, your chickens, which are super hard to bring down. Um, if you if you want to um, transhuman ignore one and two AP cover um, just ridiculous stuff you can give them plus one save uh, chickens are you running in a list right now uh, I am only running four because it's all I own uh, how many would you like um, to run I'd like to run two groups of three that's interesting uh, you are you arming them with last cannons or uh, auto cannons I'm mean, arming them with last cannons because minus one damage just seems to be everywhere and like the uh, the auto cannons are super, super hot. Good profile. Six shots is great. The problem is that, like, you go against Death Guard, and you're just like, oh, I'm just shooting with a BB gun. Ugh. Yeah. And now uh, with um, sisters, too, with their Paragon suits and everything it, else. It, it seems to be worse. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's just like, oh, what could be better than a 51 inch last cannon that can advance without penalty for one CP? And just, like, the, the ability to sit behind obscuring terrain and then just yeet 16 inches somewhere and grab an angle on somebody who didn't see it coming it's like you can't hide from them oh for sure i mean it's incredible how much mobility we gained in the new codex i feel like in some ways we can actually outrace um drakari in some cases we can get close we can get close like we can fly and then it's like oh you tied up my chickens uh i'll just shoot into combat at no penalty because they're assault weapons or if you're like i don't want to shoot last cannons there you, you do a bunch of shenanigans to have them fall back uh, and shoot, but they're just God, they're just super good. I, I would like two squads, but in my current list, you can do while we stand, we fight um, with double ranger bomb, which are hanging back, and it's super hard to kill twenty rangers, especially because you can give a morale immunity for one casual CP. Um, so that plus chickens is just like okay, start chewing through them. I'm just gonna throw vanguard, rust stalkers, bombers, and raiders, and in your way, and we'll we'll be here a while. Has it been any consideration, I guess? Um, one thing that I always think about, and uh, you see with, this, with other armies, and I don't think this is going to be something we're going to see anytime soon with Admech, just because of our troops being so good. But um, for like Vanguard or Spearhead or Outrider detachments, where you just take something crazy like max squads of chickens and max squads of dragoons, so you end up with both Iron I mean, Striders. If, if you're a millionaire, go for it. Um, <laughs> was it like 60 bucks for a 60 point model? Ooh. Uh, yeah. um, uh, the dragoons are like forty-five, I think. Dollars. It's uh, let me chat on Games Workshop right now. Yeah. Uh, fifty-five yeah, bucks for oh. a dragoon. Ugh. Oh, Ugh. Oh. Sixty with so it's like sixty with tax and all that, and you're just like, I don't really, really want to build eighteen of these. Um, I think the dragoons are really good. Sadly, they're getting overlooked, but um, yeah, dragoon dragoons are still houses. Yeah. I mean, minus minus sense. minus one to hits hot. Um, their uh, their data tether and what people forget about dragoons and the command link flyers. Mm -hmm. If I can get this right, yeah, it gives data tether to a Skatari core within three inches of it. Yep. So your dragoons can give your rust stalkers data tether, allowing them to receive buffs and benefits and they can give your sterilizers data tether and they can give like it's actually really crazy um they can give your raiders data tether so like there's a lot of synergy with dragoons running up the board just using their their 
big thick bases and and kind of being just a presence that move blocks i mean i don't know your opponent is like when your opponent wants to charge into you they normally don't want to charge into a dragoon with a two up turn one or you know turn two whenever you pop it um just super dragoon yeah dragoons are great i just think i don't need them in my army i need i need more touch you and die stuff with last cannons yeah, I can see um, that. Um, I mean, maybe, I, I, right. maybe like a Rise of Detachment or like an Expansionist Detachment or something specialized. They're super hot in Ryza for sure. Um, super hot in Ryza. Just be like, yeah, I wound every, almost everything in the game on th- twos, nearly. Because yeah, there's Katari. They can get plus one strength. They go up to nine strength. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and in Mars, they can get plus one strength on that as well. Um, Mars can get plus one strength. Um they're they're hot stuff. I think um I so to answer your question, I think the the most likely you'll see would be a uh outrider. Okay. Just because you you still need you still need right I still think raiders need to be in every list. Um at least two squads to go up the size of the boards. What about like a Vanguard with like uh Rust Stalkers and Infiltrators and Corpus Cari and things like that? So I haven't spent too much time with Corpus Cari and Fulgurites because Lucius does not benefit them at all. Yeah, um, but I really and and it's uh, weird because Mars don't they get like plus three to their uh, inch range and they're kind of a short. Sure, range. sure they do. They do go up to they do go up to fifteen. But the problem with the the priest is that Metallica doesn't benefit them at all because they already advance without penalty, right? Um, I don't believe so. Yeah, w- yeah. The Cor- Corpus Scotty Electro Priest. Each time the model makes a range attack, you can ignore any or all hit modifiers and ballistic skill modifiers. Uh, yep. So that's pretty good. Uh, not good in Metallica. Not good in Lucius. Um, not good enough for Agrippina. Twelve inches isn't enough. And so you're just in this weird spot where it's like they're super good. They don't benefit from Mars because they already have Canicles. Um, well, so they could, what they could do? With their shots, because they get three shots each. It's a little superfluous, because obviously Infiltrators and Vanguard and uh, Rangers can do all of that, but... Yeah, uh, Rangers should Wrath of Mars. Mars yeah. Rangers should Wrath of Mars every time. It's always one CP, because they're under 10 power level. Super hot stuff. Um, I don't know. I'm just... I, I just haven't spent too much... Them, uh, with, like, Lucius. Yeah, you could. That's true. And then... and then. So you could do... But you also have the strategy... The one... Um, <laughs> the yeah. only the <laughs> the warlord trade yep. that only can deep strike them, and so you just put them in Ryza. You make your three to six charge off of three after the canical that you pop at the start of the turn, and then you just you just delete things with the melee ones. I that that I am considering doing a patrol of Ryza with like fifteen fulgurites just to have a a unit that goes all right. If you leave a hole, you're dead. If you um. Because you get to decide the um, canical at the top of the turn, yeah. so you kind of know if your opponent's going to screen you out or not, and so you kind of go, okay, um, I don't need the three d six inch charge. I'm going to hold it one more turn as I just clear out all of this chaff with everything. Um, and man, that fo- those fulgurites do slap hard. Um, <laughs> they did, they no- did get a little weaker though because they did lose their uh, ability to go with a three plus and vulnerable, but I think everyone kind of saw that coming. Uh, yes, it, it was necessary. It was very necessary. But the fact that it is just uh, two mortals and the attack sequence ends is like, ugh, just slapping people with two mortals <laughs> a hit? That's nuts. Um, uh, they can, they can I just I just haven't found I just haven't found a use for them yet, I guess. I just I feel like I'm I'm starting to start with more things on the board because people are so good at screening out and everybody's taking action monkeys. So they always have something to kind of block the backfield or block the midfield. And I'd much, I'd much rather just throw up a, a boat at them full of rust stalkers and say, okay, you only have X amount of anti-tank shots. Do you want to shoot the transport or do you want to shoot the chickens or do you want to shoot the airplanes? Um, the transport is normally last on their list. Um, and in Lucius, if they ignore the transport and just try to pull, I mean, it's only T6 with a three up, so it can die to small arms fire. But Lucius just makes it like ridiculous. You're like, okay, oh, you got, um, you know, ten bolter wounds on me through, you know, a bunch of rerolls and stuff. Let me just take these on twos. I'm just like, ugh, brutal. Yeah, it's it's amazing how much um, 
things have kind of changed because I remember it always used to be Fulgurites were like the one option we really had for melee, and now it's like they, oh, were, we have, they were for sure. Yeah, now we have a million options. <laughs> it's like okay. you could do you could do Fulgurites and a Dune Rider, and I would not think that you're a bad player. Like that's totally valid. Um, you could deep strike Fulgurites, and I still think that's a fine move. I'm just gravitating towards Skatari because just the Doctrine are so powerful. And uh, the Marshall rerolls. It's like forty-five points for Captain Lieutenant Aura. Yes, please. I don't take a Dominus. I'm never going to take a Dominus ever again. I don't think. I don't know. There's, there's so many things you can do with a Dominus nowadays. It's kind of interesting. Um, it, it, he's definitely fallen off a lot, and even in uh, the last Codex, he was kind of sidelined by all of the other choices. But I feel like he. I feel like there's still like things you can kind of pull with him that are tricks. Obviously, he's fallen off to the side, but he. I think he does. He does play. give rerolls to um, to Electro Priest, and uh, and but only Castellan's half the time. Uh, <laughs> so that he's. I think if you're going to take a Dominus, you have to dip into Electro Priest, um, just to give him the re like because the obviously this Guitar Marshal doesn't help out with, at all with that. Yeah. But um. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. it's also, I guess you're, you're saying from the perspective of Lucius, I was also thinking about, like, um, the Red Axe and things like that, because I think he, him and the engines here are the only ones who can take it. Big fan of the Red Axe. Yeah. Big fan. Um, I think it's brutal. It's hilarious. It's like, <laughs> uh, I mean, as far as, I mean, I don't know if you remember, the half of our codex ended up being uh, stupid melee relics. Um <laughs> In eighth edition, and so, and then we got engine war, and half of them were more axes. Um, <laughs> but the uh, yeah, I, I can see a domino sneaking in there and and taking a taking that 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 cute Mars axe, or I think there's a generic one, but uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's or, or the metal the metallic and arm like a man just walking pe- hitting people with four damage, just trying to bop. punch them. Oh, yeah, the predator cogtooth is actually pretty good, three damage flat. Um, the problem is it has to go on a a peck priest who hits on threes, and that's no that's ugh. why does he hit on twos? Um, See, I do like issue. this. Yeah, I like the pseudo generator though. The uh, that one, so that one's. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, that one, I no, I I just like it. I think it's fine. Yeah, I, I think uh, three three additional attacks is not the worst. Um, I'm just not taking too many relics. I'm taking Exemplars of Eternity and uh, Remnant of the Techomancer. Um, and the the Elder Skull Nikolai could be great uh, if needed. Um, Foss Phoenix is okay, but I'm not having a problem. I have Remnant of Technomancer to ignore dense cover on a unit that I want. Big fan of the Omniscient Mask on the uh, Rust Docker uh, yes. guy. Big fan of that. Um, what about the uh, the manipulus relic? Uh, Lucius makes up thir- fifteen inches. It's not bad. Yeah, I mean it, it, uh, it can generate uh, two mortal wounds pretty consistently, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, um, it's not bad at all. Um, also, the tempercore. I mean, should we be uh, the omniscient mask? Uh, for those of you who aren't looking at your codex, is the six- sixes explode in melee. Um, for a, it's an aura while a friendly core Skatara unit. So that's that is huge when they charge your Vanguard blob, and you or your Ranger blob, or or they're near twenty Rangers plus ten Rust Dockers. You're you're generating just an, an, tons of extra attacks. Uh, and again, it's one CP to give it to a Rust Docker, and we would I think we'd gladly spend one CP to give them exploding sixes. Um, just period throughout the game. The fact that it can happen over the course of five turns is insane. Um, and Tempercoria is uh, fight last within three inches. Uh, or, I'm sorry, better than fight last. Not eligible to fight until all units have fought. Um, so, <laughs> the fact... are nuts. They really are. Um, the Cage of Vardemus, which is each time a bear hits an enemy... Uh, minus one to for their hits um, is not that great just because you have to hit first with it. Um, whereas I'd rather just have the Tempercordia and say you fight last goodbye. 
Yeah, I mean that that's the biggest thing is is because we have so many good ones now, even the ones that are pretty good like um, you know, the Metallica eradication ray or anything of the nature it, becomes much worse. I mean Yeah, no, absolutely. Like the rise of eradication ray, strain seven minus two, I think, is super cute. Uh we just never take it. We just have too much stuff to do. Um the Lucius relic is incredible. Obviously the solar flare, uh veil of darkness. But instead of dropping in a bunch of Necron warriors, you're dropping in Terminator Skatari. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was it was insane. an awesome relic before when it was still 30 inches. Uh, yes, it was. Yes, it was. For one character, and now it's like, oh, it does all of this as well. I was I was hoping really heavily that when um they previewed that um stra- uh, stratagem that allowed you to take a relic on a Skitari unit that you'd be able to take that on a Marshal. <laughs> Not a Marshal, but a Alpha. And they could just teleport two squads. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Brutal. Yeah, it's no. Sadly, it's, sadly, it's not on the list. Um, <laughs> but I've been having a lot of... I, I've been doing that with with the Marshal that doesn't carry the Exemplar's Eternity. Um, you could also do it on a Manipulus just as easy. Yeah, um, you know, I was uh, thinking about it. I was like, well, if I put on a Manipulus, I can have a unit of Vanguard, a unit of Rangers, and a unit of Castellans, and then just choose based on the game as like a toolbox. Yes. Which one to use? And that becomes kind of crazy because none of your opponents can ever really tech against you, but then you're taking Castellans. Yeah, I don't know if you want to do that quite yet. I just haven't figured out how to make them work. Um, I just don't know what they're supposed to do. Because they, they, like, if we're looking, okay, so the data sheet's still kind of chunky, right? So you start off with a save characteristic of two, which um, they are Cult Mechanicus, so they do get Shroud Som, uh, which is super helpful. So they go to a one, but they uh, have a a five up invuln, but they're at a one up save. So it's just, it's kind of awkward. Yeah, this, it just is the profile just kind of, I don't know. It, it just seems, I'm sure there's a way to use them, and I'm sure someone's going to figure it out, and we're all going to feel stupid for it, but uh, four plus weapon skill and ballistic skill is painful. And they don't have the weight of, I mean, they can go to weapon skill two, but there's very limited ways for them to reroll. Strength 10 is obviously good. Um, but they just, I don't know. They're, they're in a weird spot. Um, I think the way to run them would be double fisty. Um, yeah, that might be true. I, like the more I look Actually, at it. One, one fist isn't bad because you can then still shoot as you move up the board. Um, yeah, but the, I don't know. The, but why, the but, but yeah, why would, you, why would you want to shoot an extra two times? Yeah, and the points is what when, really hurts them as it is. So the points hurt. They are, they are at seven wounds, though, so they don't just get bopped by a D6 weapon. <laughs> Um, and I, and I just don't know if you run. I mean, do you do you pay for the data smith? He really doesn't do that much. Feels so bad though. It feels real bad, and it and they didn't change the way that it works, where you have to spend the action. All right, so here's how it goes: end your move spend, end your movement phase. You spend the action, and you start to make the robots whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. The but they have to be within six inches of the data smith. So if they go off and charge, if they, like, it just doesn't, it's not working. Yeah, no, I mean, it's the just only, not working. The only time I would include a data smith is I'm tele- if I'm teleporting them, and that's just, and I wouldn't even put the teleportation relic on uh, the data smith, I'd put it on a different unit, just so I could use it for other things. Sure. But then I'm like, well, why am I? I guess the reason I'm not teleporting like dragoons, for example, is because you can't get the uh, roll three d six re rolls um, on the dragoons as easily. But you know what? That might not be the bad. Uh, that might be the only way to run them is to teleport them up, give them three d six re roll all failed charges with their native uh, with their conquer protocol. Yeah. Um. You but then override them into it. The yeah, but 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 then then what? Then they go and they they what, is your opponent putting tanks on the front line? Probably not. No, they They're just little... terminators or something. But I guess Rust Stalkers can too. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Rust Stalkers. 
rest are just go blender up. I don't know. They're in a they're in a weird spot. I love the models. I think they're hilarious. Oh, um, I mean that that's why I want them to work. That's kind of my pet unit. Like if I had to pick a pet unit, it would be Castlands most likely. I think I think they're uh, I think you could get away with it at like again an RTT kind of level tournament because Admec are still very good. And if you took a 200, 300 point handicap to run three of them, I don't think it's going to be that bad. That's a lot. Especially of a lot of points. points. Yeah, but they they are beefy boys, man. Two up save T seven. So if you're again, if you're if your goal is to reach critical mass with vehicles, because I I just don't think the Dune Crawler is it. Um, so yeah, you would just do Castellan robots, airplanes, chickens. I mean, yeah, I could see that. I mean. Uh, uh, I'm kind of upset that you can't put them in Legio Teleportarium. Um, that's a big hit because, again, that Lucius list you could have potentially used bad. some combination of those two abilities of the Solar Flare and the Teleportarium to really toolbox. But uh, keep in mind they do move eight, they so do. they are they're not slow. Um, so they move eight. You advance them turn one, like you're flying up the board. Yeah. The, it's not the worst. Um, it's just like. <sighs> It's 100 points for five, was it five attacks? Yeah, five attacks with double fists and a flamer. Is yeah, that, you know, is that good enough? Yeah, I don't know. And you have to spend the CP to get them to the two up. Yeah. Weapon weapon skill. And then when they go to the two up weapon skill, they lose their three, they lose uh, their two up save. Um, I mean, so now... Just, uh, distraction Carnifex if you take two of them. Yeah, but does our is our army good? Does our army bad enough that we need to use a distraction card effects? <laughs> oh yeah, it's true. That, that, yeah, I don't know. I would love to make them work. Um, maybe I'll play. I have I have like four. I'll play around with them. Maybe maybe we can swing it. I think the way to run them though is just running them up the board. Yeah, I think for just, like a for a player just getting in who just wants to get the points to two thousand points, I think they're fine, but. For like oh, a, for sure. I mean, you, it's, you you cannot go wrong with ninety percent of the choices in the Amet Codex. Yeah, that's one thing I always want to make clear is that you know, uh, the first video of any of my series is always what to buy first, and there's always a list of units to avoid. And the Admec was the hardest. It was all like um, whatever they have in yeah. stock. <laughs> <laughs> it's like avoid the uh, you know these things because they're just expensive for the points. You know, because you know our ratio is something like. Uh, two points per dollar or something like that is like excellent for us. Yeah, it's it's uh it's an expensive army, and like if I had known that when I first got into it, um, I don't know if I would have picked them, but you know I still think they're I still think they're good. I'm still a big fan. They're, they're such beautiful um, models, though. Like, yeah, they're they're very detailed. Uh, it's just hard to transport Skatari over guardsmen because ten ten guard ten twenty guardsmen are nice and compact. They don't extend over their base too much. They are, they're what bit built in five pieces, whereas uh, that is not the case for Admech. Uh, Iron Shredders break apart very easily. I've learned that. I'm just, I'm, I'm just them. yeah. Iron Shredders break. Stupid. Uh, even Vanguard and stuff break like instantly. It's insane. Incredibly fragile. How do you transport your models? By the way, do you just use foam trays or are you using like magnetized uh, plates? Or anything like Man magnetized to to two big baking sheets, but that's got to change. Um, I, it's just becoming like because I'm running so many Skatari, they just take up too much space. So now it's got it's got to be. I think I'm gonna join the cart gang and and, and drive around a cart like a big old nerd. Um, I don't know how else to do it. Uh, I see I see the people that have carts at the tournaments. And they seem to be having the most fun, not bending over and worrying about everything. So I think I might switch over to the cart. Yeah, that's true. I mean, um, it would be nice to have something like a cart because you can use it as a table and stuff too when you're eating lunch and you just need somewhere to put sure. food. I've yeah, and like the, the, yeah, the airplanes are just too finicky. The airplanes take up too much real estate. I mean, like you said, the iron striders. And so it's like you have all these – yeah, it's got to be uh, – they're just going to catch and break on foam. <laughs> so I think it's got to be uh, a cart or something. Yeah, do you, how do you, I guess, here's something that I've been thinking about lately, is how do you uh, get it on a plane? Or have you ever transported them on a plane? I am not looking forward to it at all. Um, Cause I'm like, excuse me, I think, uh, I think it's got to be foam. Um, I do have, like, a foam case that I use for guard. Yeah. But the problem is that they're just so, they're going to get caught in foam, so it, it can't be, like, too... 
Yeah, I think you'd have to custom cut just solid foam. Like, you couldn't use any of that stuff that you have, like, little squares that you pull out. Nope, nope not for AdMech. Um, yeah. I mean, unless it's nice and tall. Uh, it could be nice and tall. Yeah, you could have um, tall foam. Um, I, think, uh, I think it's going to have to be on an airplane. It's just going to... I have the wings magnetized on both my airplanes. Um, so the wings can come off. they got to come off their flight stands. And just wrap them in foam or bubble wrap, and yeah, and just say, "All right, I'm not unpacking till the day of the tournament." Um, because I'm I'm pretty committed to Admech now. I'm taking them to tournaments. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be like, "Oh, they're a pain to travel with." I'll make it work. It's just like, yeah, because I definitely want to <laughs> at some point go to some of these larger events, and uh, I feel like uh, my biggest hurdle is going to be getting it stuff onto a plane because uh, absolutely, you can't absolutely. Really carry it on and people are not gentle with your luggage by any means right and that's why like custodes was one of my favorite armies to play because it was like Ten units. could spit it yeah it was just like oh, a couple tanks here a couple spear boys here and you're done but for that mech it's like all right <laughs> this ba- this backpack is for the infantry this backpack is for the tanks and it's just oh man uh, yeah i guess uh, you probably need like a rigid carrying case too of some kind because like uh i have one of those old school army carriers from back in the day Mm -hmm. um which i've swapped out to essentially not a tupperware container but like uh what are those things called Uh, just like a plastic container with a metal sheet in it um to magnetize that that could work um i know table war uh war boss doug uh does good makes good cases um not the problem that I'm going to see with Admech is that they're just there's just not enough room for the flyer, um, yeah. and then you have like those MDF cut like Hammerhead games. Does one I know? Uh, we got like two little handles. There's just not enough real estate for a whole Admech army. Uh, maybe a double decker version of that might be might be the play. Um, yeah, because you want it all in one. Maybe you would have to pack two different. Cases. I'm, just, I'm. I've been. I'm, case. I'm over. I'm over carrying two things. I need just have it be in one. Well, yeah, you just put, so. you put two small boxes, one big box. Is what I'm thinking. Yeah, like one. Yeah, because the infantry. Yeah, two. You yeah, never want to check absolutely. two. Absolutely. It, it's gonna get split up. It's gonna get lost. It's gonna. Oh, I'm just picturing those carousels at the airports. <laughs> you know the little ones. Yeah. Oh are. no, I, I would carry on the army. It's just plastic. Yeah, um, that's true. Um, but again, with Admech, that's like going to be the world's. Oh, yeah. Mm, mm. I don't know. It's been a while since long. So, I mean, the TSA does not do a particularly great job, uh, in my experience, of checking anything. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I've gotten through with some stuff I didn't realize I had on me. Nothing, nothing illegal, but it was just like, oh yeah, yeah. Like I had a soldering iron in my backpack one day, and I got through the security. And I was like, oh, that's in there. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I think you'd be okay with magnets. Um, that would be what I would do is I would I would get a nice like hard shell, uh, thing to kind of put in like a duffel bag almost. Uh, yeah, you and, have to. And, There's no yeah. way to get anything soft. Uh, you would, you would crush everything when someone tries to stick their. Oh luggage. yeah, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and it's like again, some some armies can get away with it. Adam Mac, not so much. Um, feel bad for ju- people traveling with Jukari as well. Those poor raiders are going to get all their points broken. Yeah, but just, uh, uh, nowhere to buy some uh, super glue, I guess, nearby the tournament. Location. I've been taking super glue to every game I play because it's like, all right, we're going to lose three or four boys. <laughs> They're kind of going to need some mid battle repairs. Yeah. So, so one other thing is, uh, you're you're a commission painter, uh, correct? Yeah, I, I got a, I've got a. Uh, it's it's been work's been very steady. Uh, a lot of people like to play, not a lot of people like to paint. So we're we're finding good success right now. Awesome, awesome. Do you um do you varnish the models or what? What's your experience with varnishing? Because that's something that I've been kind of looking uh, at. Tester, so. testers, matte varnish. Uh, comes in a little can. One that's laying around here. I just got done putting do you, some on a piece. On? Yeah. Nope, it's a spray can. Oh. Give it a good give it a good shake. Um, it's, it's not very tall. You can find it at hobby town or, uh, Amazon. You're looking for testers, T E S T O R, uh, Matt, M A T T E varnish. Um, it's called spray lacquer. Um, it's, it's perfect for what it does. Uh, I would do two coats of it. If you're big into airbrushing, I've done the matte varnish from Vallejo, 
to find success, but the tester is just super easy to be like, all right, 30, 30 troops done, big tank done, shake the can for, you know, a couple seconds, and out to the garage, and psh, 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 done. Yeah, that's that's one thing I've always been trying to kind of avoid as much as possible is spray painting things. I mean, I have the space for it, but it would be outside, so I just don't want to, like, spray paint something, leave it, and then come back and find, like, squirrels got to it or something. Yeah, you gotta be you gotta be careful about doing it outside. The garage is great. Um, and uh, what I would just recommend is just look over your model real quick, uh, fire it over with some uh, computer duster or just airbrush, uh, just air to make sure you got no dirt grime on it, um, and seal it up as quickly as you can. So I normally once it's done, once I'm done painting, uh, everything's finished. I'm gonna let it dry for twenty four forty eight hours. Um, take that into the garage, uh, hit it with a lacquer, let it sit for another day, hit it with another spray, let it sit for a day. Normally pretty good, but everybody's got their own method. Um, if you have a better, if you hear of a better one, go for it. It's probably okay. This is just what I found to be the most consistent and uh, easiest. Uh, have, you, have you ever had any issues with uh, waiting for a little while before you varnish or... Anything of that sort. I'm pretty conservative. I've never been like, ah, I've got to get this varnish for a tournament real quick. So I haven't uh, pushed it, but I'm I, I'm sure it says dry time 24 hours. But I'm sure that if if you're not glopping on the paint, you can get away with just a couple hours. Oh uh, no, I mean I mean like let's say because uh, right now I have a bunch of models I have painted up and uh, I never varnished them, and then I was painting one recently. I looked at a place where I was holding it, and it started to rub off the paint a little bit. So I was like, okay, yeah. yep. And you varnish everything, Absolutely. but I'm just wondering if I'm going to experience any issues if I, you know, the models have been painted for, uh, you know, a month plus now. Uh, no, 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 okay, okay, I see what you mean. Uh, go in there with your, again, with an airbrush or computer duster, give them a good spray. Um, if you see any, you know, see any part, like hairs, grab them with some tweezers. Um, it's just going to be using your eyeballs. And, like, if you've been playing with them and there's some dings and stuff, fix them up before you put the lacquer on. But yeah, absolutely seal all your models. Um, you're spending hours and hundreds of dollars on them. Uh, definitely hit them with just a quick little, quick little spray at the end. It takes three seconds, um, and you'll be way happier. Have you found that it changes the color at all, or do you think the matte varnish generally keeps it kind of the same consistency? Matte, matte varnish does keep it, in my opinion, the, the, about the same consistency. Um, uh, again, it, it really depends on on how glossy your paint is. So, like, um, GW paints aren't super glossy. Uh, Vallejo, I found to be not super glossy. Um, so that works really well. But you can always just spice it up with a gloss varnish, and everything's super bright and shiny. Um, but but matte has been my my go to, um, and I just think it's it's just uh, needs to become. I mean, everybody primes their models like. This is the, this is priming part two. Like you would never just be like, yeah, I'm just going to paint it and not prime it. That's just not going to end well. Same thing for just saying, yeah, I just don't need to varnish it. It's like, take three seconds, slap a varnish on there. You'll be really happy a year from now when you can just take a dusty model and just wipe it with a cloth and you're fine. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, that, that, that does make a lot of sense, especially when you said wipe it down um, after the fact. Um, I, I guess, what about the dip method? I mean, isn't that just min wax? Like, <laughs> you, isn't that just min wax marked up four hundred percent? No, I'm just, I'm just uh, joking on that one. Uh, actually, speaking of which, because everyone's always looking for uh, shortcuts on, uh, you know, um, painting. What would you say is kind of for someone who's like a new painter, let's say, that might be listening? What would you say is a skill to learn that they'll be able to evolve over time? Airbrush. Airbrush. Airbrush, 100%. Um, start by priming with an airbrush. Get used to get used to the the trigger. Get used to cleaning it. Um, start by priming, and then just just act like you just primed with the spray can, paint it like normal. Get get that. Get in the habit of that. Get your get get your mechanics down on how much comes out. Um, dial in your PSI. All this all this stuff. Um, prime cardboard and sprues before you prime actual models. Um, once you, once you feel pretty comfortable with that, start switch to base coating and base coat with an airbrush. I'm just big team airbrush. It makes, I mean, I don't think I'm 
particularly talented with a brush. Um, airbrushing just saves me so much time and gets me those fatty blends that everybody likes. Um, there's great YouTubers that do great work showing people how to start airbrushing. Um, it's, I mean, you can go on Amazon right now and get a uh, air compressor um, and a airbrush from China for like a hundred bucks. Uh, and then if you break the airbrush, you're not out but 30 bucks and you have a compressor to upgrade from. So I bought the uh, master airbrush, multi-purpose gravity feed, dual action airbrush kit with hose for $99.99. And six months later, I bought another master airbrush for 30 bucks. And after that, I felt pretty comfortable and I went and upgraded to a nicer airbrush and, uh, but worked my way back up. Um, I just really, I just, I would just encourage everybody to get one. I think they're like the best thing ever. Um, they're a little daunting in that you have to clean them. And, but like right now there's, there's hundreds of YouTubers out there. See, my um, next question is how hard is it to actually clean one of those? Cause I've heard some stories, but I can't imagine it's too bad. So there's a couple methods. If you're using a $30 airbrush, you can legit just put it in water. I think that's what uh, some painters do. Um, but like, I clean mine about once a week with dish soap. Uh, soak it in warm water for overnight. Take a toothbrush the next morning and a couple of specialized tools that you get with the starter kit. So you're not spending any extra money. Um, and clean, clean, clean. Um, you can buy a airbrush cleaner fluid. This is a uh, Medea M E D E A Medea airbrush cleaner. This is uh, act, this has lasted me two years now, and it's still about a fifth full. Um, slap that in there uh, every time you're changing from like metallics to not metallics. Get yourself some airbrush thinner, um, which is also just retardant. Uh, the airbrush flow improver. Um, and that, that'll keep your clogs down and just uh, use a toothbrush on the nozzle. Um, I mean, there, like I said, it's, there's hundreds of YouTubers that will walk you through it. Um, if the demand is high enough, I have no problem sitting down and, and knocking out a quick one too, just because I'm, I'm very passionate about the airbrush. It's not something that's scary. Um, it's definitely something that took off um, a lot more recently. I remember I've never heard about it until a year ago, and then I'm seeing a lot about it nowadays. And it, it's something that I definitely want to try at some point, especially for vehicles. I feel like it would make them so much more easier just because painting large models with normal brushes seems very daunting. Yeah, and, and like we all, we are all just normal people. We don't have Master's of Fine Arts degrees. We don't know how to make those perfect, creamy... Uh, I mean, you can tell right away a vehicle that's hand painted because you can see the brush strokes. Because we're not, we're we're not incredible artists. So, in my opinion, that's that's the airbrush kind of like levels that playing field. Um, and you can check out my Insta and, and see the vehicles that have been airbrushed, and it's just like, oh, that looks like like incredible. And it's not because of anything that I did. It's literally just figuring out how to how to get the colors to make it look extra fancy and where the light would hit. Um, I don't know. I, I could talk about airbrushing for, uh, for hours, yeah, but do you, do you find it difficult to use an airbrush in small models, for example? Like what 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 model size would you, or if you had to pick like um, a model where you would switch back to hand painting in the Admech line, let's say, uh, or in the Necron line, because I know Necrons have like the Scarabs, which is a good example of a tiny model. Um, where would you kind of make that delineation, if you would at all? Necrons, I don't uh, I don't know if I so Scarabs, I wouldn't use a brush on at all. I would uh, airbrush them, whatever your base coat is. So let's say you're doing traditional silver. Um, so I would airbrush them silver. I would flip them over, airbrush the underside of them with a Vallejo gunmetal. is a great color. Um, hit them from below. With that, flip them back over. Hit them from all over with Nuln oil, 50% Nuln oil, 50% water, and your airbrush at about 40, 45 PSI. Um, let that all dry and then go in with a dark green and hit the center of the circles um, extra close go go way low on the PSI like 20 um, just so you can get extra close and make nice little dots uh, hit all the dots with that dark green 
switch over to light green and just kind of give it a nice glow effect. Uh, each scarab should be done in about five minutes. No, no, no brush needed. Admic uh, is the is not a great army to airbrush, um, <laughs> but you can hit the cloaks. Like uh, on my guitar, I have the cloaks on a on a gray to blue fade. Um, so I I have all their cloaks. I, I assemble the model completely just because I'm not about to sub assemble a hundred guitari. Um, if it was for a commission, I might just could, just to get in the nooks and crannies a little better. But for personally, it's like I gotta go. So I mean, I sub assemble like the arms um, at the backpack, but I, I assemble the body fully when I paint them. I feel like no one's gonna really look inside the cloak because um, I see a lot of yeah, people sub assembling yeah. that. I'm like that. That's just too much. I don't got yeah. It's like we maybe maybe an eighth edition where you ran 15s guitar, right? but now we're running a hundred. So chop chop. Yeah, uh, team or something where you really can get the detail in every single unit, but th- yeah, I, try, I try my hardest to find little ways of avoiding painting as much as I can. <laughs> then get an airbrush and just hit the cloak gray, gray hit the cloak gray, uh, and then I hit the cloak blue from the bottom, hit the cloak one more time in the middle with the gray just to blend everything back together, and then it's just basically metallics. Um, the pants that I do are black, um, so it's black, and then it's just a bunch of metallics. Um, the shoulder pads, I gotta get in there with, uh, with a brush. So, yeah, the, the Scutari are definitely not the most airbrush friendly, but, like, the, the boat, um, you can do almost 100% with an airbrush, just minus the metallics. Yeah, I can, I can see the boat being a huge, hugely better. Flyer to flyer, I got, I have the, uh, one of the flyers on the, on, on the Instagram where it's like, yeah, this is a lot of surface area. This is a big kit. We're not we're not hand painting this. We're just gonna hit the whole thing with a dark blue. Uh, then we're gonna hit the where the light would hit with a light blue, and then we're gonna go in just horizontally and hit with a, a medium blue, and you just touch up all the edges. Uh, I'm a big fan of edge highlighting, um, but when I'm doing airbrush on vehicles like that, I just go with like a light color, and you just you just do your edge highlights with an airbrush, and you just get out of there. That makes sense. I mean. I can see this guitar being kind of difficult just because of all the fine detail and everything else. Any model like that probably. What's up? All the fine details. They're crazy. Uh, Marines, you can airbrush super straightforwardly, though. Oh, yeah. Um, I've been uh, painting one by hand, and I just find how... Because I remember bro. Marines from, like, 3rd edition or whatever. They were kind of small, but the new ones... Um... No, they're chunky boys. Yeah. yeah. You gotta, yeah, so for, like, a Marine airbrush... Um, you, you, you do you hit them with that, that gray primer. Then I take a white primer and I hit them from directly above their head to kind of create some shadows. And then I just go in with my base color and then I go in with all, uh, with a light color. Same thing for sisters, by the way, going with a lighter color on just above their head again. And then you can, from there, you have a nice, beautiful scale and you can either finish that off with edge highlights with a brush or if you're in a hurry, you just kind of hit the chest again with a light color. Maybe the shoulder pads, the top of the shoulder pads, the knees always look great when they're a little brighter, and the toes, and you're on your way. Uh, if you had to, actually, uh, speaking of uh, Space Marines, if you had to pick a chapter to play, which uh, Space Marine chapter would you play? I would play Salamanders right now. I, uh, I think aggressors are pretty strong. I like their, I like their rules a lot. Um, I don't know. Old, I think Ultramarines are like probably the best. I'm a big fan of the John Lennon Ultramarine list um, with all the Dreadnoughts, and Dreadnoughts are super fun to play with. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think makes them so strong? The ability to minus one damage across the board on Dreadnoughts is insane, right? So your auto cannons feel real bad, and that's one of the reasons why I'm using last cannons instead of auto cannons, just because it's like, ugh, minus one damage just cuts your damage in half. Um, they get an invul with psychic fortress, um, so they're just they're just really points efficient. They feel very admechy in that regard, where they're just they're just really efficient. And the fist is a monster. The redemptor fist is three plus d three damage, five attacks, strength a million. Um, this is I, the I, uh, the base codex, by the way, because I, I recently purchased the uh, space marine codex to do a series on them. And I uh, just started reading it. I just looked at how much they broke everything up in that codex. Um, and it, yeah, it's it a little. It's a little it is. It is. And the, I mean, the dreadnoughts can give can get the uh, wisdom of the ancients for a nice little captain aura. 
the dreadnoughts are just dreadnoughts are very good, and now you're seeing the contemptors everywhere. Um, the Forge World contemptor bull kite. Yep. yep. Um, Especially with tally men and uh, death guard. Yeah, it's super strong. Have you? Um, you should definitely definitely cover that monster just because it's it's just an insane uh, stackage of uh, value, and it doesn't degrade. Did you know that it's only nine wounds, so it does not degrade. Um, yeah, I see so, a lot of lists running two of them. Yeah, I think two is the magic number. I think three, you get a little greedy, but two, they're core. Um, I believe, don't quote me on that. Um, well, they do cost the command point each, right? Yeah, but I think you're, I think you're happy to pay that. Just like, a, just like we're, we're happy to pay, um, oh, yeah, yeah. a point, a point for some of our stuff. I think space Marines are more than happy to say one point to drop four mortal wounds on demand wherever I want. Sure. I'll take it. Oh, for sure. I mean, death guard doesn't have that many, um, interesting stratagems. Like they have a, they have some really good ones, but then it's not like some armies where you look at them and you have like a specific unique stratagem for every unit that like you really want to like stack. It's so bad because we have a stratagem for every unit and it's so fun. Like every unit's got something cool it can do. Um, same thing with sisters. I think they did a great job making uh, a lot of their units have specialized stratagems um, that I think are very fun. I'm kind of yeah. I'm hoping that's the trend. I'm hoping that's the way it goes because it's a good way to help units that might not see the table have a nice little boost to them. Um, like the fact that we can just spend one CP to give all Sicarians and a unit plus one attack. Like that just feels that just feels good. It feels good to spend that CP. Whereas like the chaos player I played against has been one CP for sixes to wound is an additional AP. And it's like, ugh, that's what you get one CP for. That feels bad. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I mean, I've seen, um, I, I've seen that with like, especially going from old codexes to new codexes and like engine war really showed this off pretty well. Was, did a great uh, job. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. With some of the old stratagems were like, yeah, these, these are fun. These are okay, but they weren't like, surprisingly amazing i mean there were, there were a few that were always like particularly good but the same thing with the relics and traits and things like that and now looking at here it's like uh these these some of these weapons that were pretty cool before just became completely outclassed by like utility stratagems and things like that or not utility stratagems so like utility relics and things like that yeah well engine wars set a really good precedent for this is a unit we wanted to have a special do something um and so it did we had a our transport had a special stratagem to disembark for free. Our Dune Rider, Scorpius, whatever tank had shoot all its guns and get plus one to hit. Um, our bomber had a stratagem. Our flyer gunboat had a stratagem. Um, I'm trying to think. The Raiders had their fall back and shoot. The Phosphor Hounds had six inch advance. Um, so like everything just felt like it had a job with a. a Strategy to help it get there. Um, and I'm hoping that's the trend that continues. And I really feel like they did a great job in the new codex giving that feeling. Um, Death Guard do feel like they did not get that. And that's kind of sad. Yeah, I mean, it's different with Death Guard. Uh, they, they feel like a very different army than any other army that I've seen. And especially since you look at like what their Warlord trait is, it's a very specific ability in the contagions that they get. Um but they also don't get anything for the plague companies individually outside of that. So it's not like they're getting a generic dogma or holy order buff or, you know, a chapter tactic or anything of that nature to go onto all of the units of the plague company. It's just those three abilities essentially. Yeah, that's true. And I, and I haven't uh, d dove into the death guard codex as um, diligently as I probably should have, but I just, I just look at our stratagems and sisters and I'm hoping that the trend continues of give units fun stratagems to put them on the table. Oh, 100%. I, I think a stratagem, again, like we saw with uh, Rust Stalkers in 8th edition, was uh, they got their stratagem. Corpus Gary got their stratagem. They saw a lot more play. Iron Striders got their stratagem. They saw a ton of play. And obviously it's nice when units have like a core power level so you can take them without having to always invest command points into them. But, um, you know, it's it's still good that it's... It's given us options. Given us, given us tools in the toolbox. Exactly. Um, and that that's what feels really good about playing Admech right now is we we probably might have too much tools, but we certainly we definitely have a lot. Yeah. 
nuts. Um, let's see. Um, was thinking, I kind of lost my train of thought here. I was thinking of something else, then I looked over. I think we might have also, by the way, been unlisted this whole time because sure. <laughs> the the stream. So I, I think I changed the settings so people can actually see it now. Um, it's recording though, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's there's, okay. a, there's a backup recording because at the end of the day, it always gets uploaded. Most of the views come from the uh, re-upload anyway, as all things do. But um, I was just sure, staring sure. at off to the side there. I looked over my second monitor. I'm like, why does that say unlisted? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> oh, I feel like a boomer there. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. You're good. Yeah. Anyway, it'll, it'll be up. I mean, it's it's done as both. Um, but I was just wondering why. I'm like, eh, it doesn't look like we're getting that many viewers, but that's probably why. Um, that could have done it, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll be fine. There's a there's a backup recording both on YouTube and on my computer. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe maybe some people are still able to see it because unless they can still see it, they just can't um easily find it. Is essentially what it means. Um, sure. Well, yeah. So go back yeah, to yeah. go back to some of the admex stuff. Um, what what's like what would be like a forge world that you personally want to make work? Like if you had to pick a forge world out of any of them, custom or otherwise. I think I think there's a lot of different routes to go. I mean, obviously I'm pushing for my competitive list will probably stick to Lucius. Um I'd like to make Ryza in your face not like just straight Rust Dockers and Dragoons and I mean, even Baby Skatari when they get Blood Angels is going to be good. Um, I really want to make that work. I really like uh, Agrippina for like a mid rangey board. It depends on how like good demons are because demons don't care about AP at all. That could really hurt them. Um, I just think there's a lot of play around the board. I think the only dead, dead, dead ones are Stygies and Grya. Really, is there any. Um... I guess, is there any redeeming factors for uh, Stygies? Stygies has a super good Warlord trait to redeploy things that are in your deployment zone. Um, so you can be like, you know, Eldar, you can be like Ultramarine. But see, it's not even as good as that because it's only in your deployment zone. So you forward deploy, go second, and you're like, oh, well, I can't save that unit. So you don't want to stick it out there, but which is the kind of Stygies' whole point uh, they're just they're just in a weird a weird spot. Um, what about as uh, a, there's one thing because isn't there an ability for them to redeploy? I think it's like their regular... that's their warlord, yeah that's their warlord trait. So you two re, so you two redeploy, but you only get to pick them from your deployment zone. Yeah. And if you're not, I mean, if you're not, um, you're not getting off a turn one charge. Like even if you put your goons in the line, you go, oh, I'm going second. Let me hide them. I just, it's just not like that's how I like that's how I use Stygies in eighth edition. Was Stygies Dragoons were amazing because they were minus two to hit. Yeah. Um, what about but just like, like uh, using them as a way to save command points for uh, strategic reserves? Because you can have those units. Sure. Yeah. No, you you absolutely could. Um, but the thing is that it's only one CP to deep strike twenty Skatari. They're only eight power. They're only eight power level. Um, and you don't, and you don't want your Skatari in reserve, right? Because you don't want, you need to buff them. So what do you want to deploy that you would then redeploy? Um, could be robots, I guess. Um, but then you're just losing just the, the weird, um, the weird thing of, I want to be in your face as Stygies with a stratagem, and also I want to be very far away so I can get dense cover. It's, it just kind of doesn't sit well with me. Also, an incredible amount of things ignore cover. Um, so Stygies, sadly, I think is going to be on the sideline for a long time. Um, and I think I think Graia is also, Graia is also just done. Um, combat attrition tests automatically passed. Don't care. We have acquisition at any cost for one CP, which is uh, for those you don't know, acquisition at any cost is uh, pick a objective, and all your admin units are morale immune on that objective. <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, so that that part of the gray eye doesn't really do anything to me, and a mortal wound on a five up, you get to ignore it. Uh, we're not really fighting mortal wound spam, so I don't really see the point. 
Well, you never know. I mean, there's the Thousand Sons and Grey Knights codex coming out. So that that's very true, but you can also just put your transport to block the smites, and then for one CP, give it a four up, feel no pain against mortal wounds. That's true. Um, so that's uh, yeah. I I just don't I just don't see the play in, in Stitches or Graia. Also, the fact that you can't re-roll their psychic powers deny on a four up feels just real bad. Yeah. In eighth in eighth edition, it was cute and. Uh, uh, Jeff and Control Robinson used to run the Rusty 17 just for the Gray I deny because you had a 75% chance to get it because you could deny it. Yeah, now um, you just have 50 50. You, now it's just it's a, good luck. Flip a coin. Um, and we have so many good stratagems that spending a CP to do nothing feels very bad. Yeah, yeah, that's the worst part. I wish it was like a two plus or something where it's just okay because you can only deny one power a turn, so they can definitely play around it to some extent. I wish it was or um, plus, plus one if you're within 12, or you know, plus yeah, one if this, unit, if this unit is XYZ. Anything besides just yeah, it's also it's also limited to a range of uh units. So. 18, 18, that's so not that's a lot, yeah. yeah. Um, and their relic is also just dead, just adding uh, not adding three inches but up to a max of nine. Yeah, that's a really weird one. That's just the old Mars uh warlord trait, I believe. Yeah, and it's like I just don't get it because the um, you don't need three inches on your marshal because I just I just don't get it. I'm just I'm just I feel like those two are misfires, but I really do feel like a lot of plays. Are in, I got Agrippina because um, did you have you read Agrippina's relic? Uh yes. If there's ever a vehicle meta or a night meta, yeah, they're just uh, all conservatives are rerolling failed wounds. Yeah, yeah I'm doing my luck because I want to make Agrippina work. That's the one that I really want to kind of push, at least as like as a detachment within a greater army, because I love Cataphrons. But um, with my luck, it's going to be all Tyranids all the time. <laughs> no vehicles. But hey, if it's all Tyranids, then pay. Then call me a fan because then it's nothing but Vanguard for me. <laughs> Just wounding, uh, dropping thirty wounds on a Dikemekarewan or whatever. Being like, all right, good, good luck. Um, Agrippina does have the cute warlord trait as well, which you can give the four up uh, shoot with one of its ranged weapons. Um, it has to be core, which, if you remember, the iron shredders are core. Everything is core. <laughs> uh, every, right. So, so, uh, so iron shredders and a four up can just shoot twin last cannons. Goodbye. Um, and. Your vanguard just can shoot three times. Like they shoot three shots when they die. So if they remove a brick of vanguard, you shoot with ten of them. You shoot thirty shots back. That's not bad. What about using it oh. as a combat trait? Because it works in uh, the fight phase too, if I remember correctly. So what about? Because uh, it's only one attack. Yeah, true. Is it? Um, which is okay on rust dockers. Okay, but see, I'm just trying to think of them like. Okay, oh, yeah, so I got attack. That's what it was. Uh, yeah, robots, castlins. Hey, that's not bad. Get your one punch in <laughs> yeah. on a four man. up. On a four up, yeah. Um, oh, it's it's but Agrippina, Agrippina also has um, the it can't um, each time an enemy declares a charge against Agrippina units if they're not within engagement range, they can hold steady or set to defend, and both those are super forgotten about. Um, yeah, it's just people forget about it, and it's, it's way better than I think people think it is. Um, even just with like large blocks of twenty rangers or twenty vanguard, um, being able I'm to I'm a huge, Overwatch. huge fan, huge fan of overwatching vanguard because you get sixty shots. So math math says you get ten hits, and if you know anything about vanguard, ten hits is ten auto wounds. Yeah. And then you can double that potentially. Uh, well, not auto wounds, but you can add another yeah, ten yeah, minutes on top of that. Yeah, for free. For free. Yeah, just set to defend, and then hold steady is really underrated oh, and as well. They're in half range, plus one AP. They're in half range, plus one AP. Um, let's say you have the the um, Tempercordia on a, on an alpha around there. Something charges you. Your Skatari are in the. Plus one weapon skill, minus one ballistic skill. So now they hit on threes. Now they hit on twos with hold steady. And all of a sudden you're just... (laughs) 
You're just uh, you're you're hitting on twos, Eskatari? Question. Yeah, like uh, does anyone does anyone ever charge your rust stalkers at that point, or any any melee units that you might have? Like, I don't think anyone wants to charge you at that point. No, they can't. They can't. They 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 just can't. They they're just going to eat mortal wounds. And like the again, rust stalkers are core. They're getting they're getting captain and lieutenant auras. Um. Here's another but, one: is, uh, uh, infiltrators, because they get the half-range pistol weapon uh, AP with uh, five or three shots, depending which one they have. Big fan. They get big the fan. Set to defend whenever they get charged. Yep, and then they uh, then they get the uh, so they uh, then they don't they don't get rerolls against them, so they're surprisingly um, yep. surprisingly beefy. I really think that uh, that. The more I talk about it, maybe we can make it work. Who knows? Um, Griffin is growing might... on me. Every time I talk about them, I find out a little more that I can do with them. Yeah, and again, like you said, if it becomes a, um, if it becomes a really big vehicle meta or night meta, just to be like, um, oh, and so the 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 red, just for those who aren't following around with the codex, is the Eye of Z Lexum, which is at the start of your shooting phase. Whoever has this relic selects one enemy vehicle within 18 inches. Does not need to be visible. So you can hide behind a wall, select one enemy within 18 inches, and now you have an aura whenever an Agrippina core, which is 99% of the army, or Catafron Servitor, which is the other 1%, uh, targets that model, you re rolling the wound roll. Re roll the wound roll. Um, yeah. And that'll do core. it. That'll do it. Um, it's super valuable in arc weapons, which are just fishing for the fours. Um, God, that's just super strong. Um, yeah. Problem is, is, some games it might just not do anything. Again, uh, some Tarot games it might not now. do nothing. Some games it might do nothing. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see what it. we'll see where the meta goes. But uh, I'm I'm pretty high on it. I think they're I think they're solidly in fourth place behind Lucius, Metallica, uh, Mars. Uh, Ryzen might Ryzen might be okay. Fourth place is really hard to judge because there's also a data horde with the Cognus rerolls. There's also um, an expansions potentially as like a good uh, specialist. I think once you get to like fourth place, you're looking at a secondary detachment more so than anything. But oh, we got more specialists. Yeah, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. But uh, it's definitely a hard call for what Forge World is going to take what place because I, I think I haven't I haven't seen many people agree which one's the top one for example but i've seen the, the top three seem pretty consistent um but then there's no consensus i don't think in the number one and potentially according to some people data horde might even be number one just because of the uh, six flyer list yeah, six flyers a lot of cognizant that's just re-rolling everything yep that's and a big deal pains on already hard to kill units yeah, I mean, the 10 wounds is... So the, the airplanes are T7, which they don't look like they should be T7, but they are. They can get a 2-up save pretty easily with your uh, with your Doctrina. And you add on a feel no pain on that, and they're, they're only 10 wounds, which is a good thing and a bad thing, because they only give up one point to bring it down. Like, they're just so good. Yeah. <laughs> they're just rough. Um, yeah. So... We we both in agreement that we take the maximum number of radium Giselle dragoons, correct? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely want to snipe them characters, uh, especially the mirror match. You can just snipe out their marshals. Just spend <laughs> spend what seventy points to to get like two shots. It's so bad. Why does it exist? <laughs> I think it's fifty five points, right? I don't know. Yes. The taser is expensive, so you're yeah. right. I mean, if you're trying to shave points and you want your dragoons doing the wrong roll, sure. Uh, I mean, okay. So, is there any world where you would take a dragoon uh, with, with a, a gun? sorry with a with a radium chazale? No, there's no world. There's there are zero worlds. I can see I... literally one where if you just need a body that has those stats and you don't care about the weapon and you have 55 points, <laughs> that's that's the only one I can see. I just I don't I mean the fact that it's uh the fact that it doesn't even do mortal wounds yeah. it just it's just auto wounds it's like I don't I don't understand what would you like if you had to if you were tasked with fixing the radium chazale what would you do to fix it 
uh, make it at least as good as the rifle that's Katari carry around, right? The Transonic. Yeah. No. 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 The uh, yeah, the Aquabus, right? Yep. yep like, it, like, why is this? This is a a, a, wa- a Strider walking around. Um, I mean, like, if we're getting if we're getting real outside the box, two heavy two strength eight minus two D three mortals. Uh, if it's hit by this weapon, it's minus one strength, minus toughness. Kapow. Because it's yeah. radium. It's shooting cancer at people. <laughs> I, I definitely want it to be good. I think it looks cool, but I'm always sad that it, it can't. Or actually... Uh, I just don't get it. I just don't understand it. Why? Yeah. It's just, it's again, those so things goofy. they didn't fix. But, and it feels like they fixed everything else, but that's the one they just like overlooked. Yeah, I mean, like, even if you just like look at like little changes, like, oh, the incinder, the incinderine combustor on Kaston robots got an extra AP. Yeah. Um, the auto cannons got two extra shots. Like, just things that, like, just like little things. They went around and went, oh, the um, the phosphor blaster on the Dune crawler. Like, I, the I phosphor never, blaster like, on the, the Dune crawler. Take it. On the new one, I would potentially. Yeah. Depending on what I'm doing. Yeah. The uh, the saber, or I'm sorry, the um. The uh, they gave the raiders an extra attack just because it made sense. They're like a skirmish, you know, like just a lot of little things like that. They they obviously fixed rust dockers as we established. Um, yeah, they, like they, yeah, they they went around. They they fixed the hydraulic claw. That thing's a house. Oh yeah, they they fixed um, again. They fixed rust dockers and infiltrators, which I was surprised by. Um, and it, it you know. Um, People suggested similar things to that in the old videos that I made of because I always ask you know how to fix things and that seems to be a big one. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm it is a bit sad that radium just sales just aren't good still. But someone will find a way to make them work. I don't think so, but okay. <laughs> they just they just don't they just don't accomplish the the, the goal. Um, to t- like I just yeah. Uh, I don't know how you'd fix it. I think the only other thing that it, that is like needs, we're not even gonna address the flying transport if that's okay with you. The whole thing just makes me sad and makes my head yeah, hurt. That's another one that um, kind of sad that he didn't fix. Uh, what, um, which other unit? There was another unit that I was thinking of. That I was wondering the other unit that could use a little patch. Obviously, we talked about the robots giving them like a sweep attack or something. Yeah. Uh, Data Smith could probably. That's kind of the. Yeah. Data Smith's odd. He's like his gamma pistol is hilariously strong. Um, gonna upgrade like, to a gamma what? pistol. Upgrade that bad boy to the four damage pistol. Um, but no, I, I mean in terms of like bit, like ag, like like units that that I want to see, I really think the Dune Crawler needs a little needs a little kick in the pants. Um, oh, it doesn't feel bad. It's 115 points. It's the same points as a robot. Is, Absolutely, that's the saving grace. Is it's cheap as chips for yeah. for what you, for what you get for it. And our heavy um, support slot isn't that impressive these days. Like it used to be way better. So, it just feels like an easy yeah. thing to kind of. Yeah, I mean the the and the the base on those guys is so big that you can just uh, you just put that put that uh what do you call it the Foster Blaster on them. Just walk them with the field, get them in the way of things. Um, yeah, they're hard stand. to kill. They're, they're, they're not fun to kill. I mean, two up save, turn one with the Doctrina. Um, just walking up the field. I still I like the Icarus uh, profile a lot. Yep, um, that's one I'm a big fan of. Even the Neutron Laser's not bad now that it's 115. I'm, I mean, not, I'm not rolling D3 shots for Neutron Laser over my dead body, no. Oh, it's so painful when you get one. And yeah, and it's, <laughs> yeah, it'd be it'd be different if the Mars Canical was re-roll uh you know number of shots as well. But the fact yeah. that the fact that you're just like, all right. Uh, I'm, I'm with you on that it. though. Yeah. I used to always I used to always feel kinda iffy about the neutron laser, especially watching battle reports and you see people just constantly whiff with it. Like I rolled a one, rolled another one, the hundred fifteen yep. points. Yay. <laughs> and the fact the fact that we have no re rolls to go with it, um, feels yeah. bad. Um, but uh, I, I do think the Dune Crawl is probably underrated right now because again it's 115 points and it, it's painful to kill and it's a big unit. Um, yeah, I mean the fact that the uh, that the long range eradication beam 
went to two damage flat. I think it's a big deal. Um, I mean, I'm just trying to think. Uh, the pro, I mean, D6 shots just makes me a little nervous. Um, but the fact that you yeah. can pair this, the fact that you can pair that with the engine seer, um, to get that plus one to hit might make it okay. I think, um, I think I'm probably gonna stick with the Icarus, but the Phosphor Blaster is a close second for me, which is surprising. Yeah, cause... especially if, especially if the meta you know turns back to like two wound troops, and you're just like doof doof doof, you know, pick up yep. three or four boys. <laughs> what about uh, Belisarius Call? That's another unit that seems to have kind of lost its so, place. I don't know. I'm not. Everybody acts like he's like dead, but his ability still isn't bad. He has a lot. Of I abilities. mean. He has a lot of different abilities. Um, so he, he gets he he gets your Dominus Aura on a on a fatty base, um, and he gets to uh, select one Cult Mechanicus core. So in this case, Electro Priest. Um, <laughs> it seems to always be the case. It's so sad. Um, yeah. So you, and you can already use a active Canical, but you get both. Oh, instead you don't get both. Ugh. That 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 one's kind of dead because you're not gonna be around another electro priest. You want to send them up the field, or if they're shooting, the only one you really want are none of them. What do electro priests want? They don't want cover. They don't want minus one to hit in melee because they're killing things. You're just dying. Well, if you, um, if you put them with corpus carry, they can get some benefit from the shooting abilities. Sure, reroll reroll a couple hits. Try to fish for more sixes. No, but you're already rerolling because you're gonna give them the. The super reroll, the Lord of Mars reroll. So like one. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, so you don't even care about that. Uh, uh, man, I, I I really thought that call would be a little a little better, um, just because he's such a pretty model and he's a lot. He of is, and also just the visual of uh him with a gaggle of priests around him, this giant yeah. priest with a bunch of like little priests scurrying about, makes me want to really try just because of the visual. They've really been pushing these supreme commanders. Like Vol is is pushed. Yep. Crazily, um, Mortarian has three warlord traits. Uh, Call shows up and he's like, "Hey guys, I shoot not great. Uh, I punch okay, and I give a bad aura to people. Like, I give a Dominus aura. <sighs> Just kind of a bummer. Um, I mean, the only thing I can think of is comboing him. Yeah, I just can't think of anything. The fact that it's a core unit means." It It'd be different if he could give his Lord of Mars to Cataphrons. Um, then yeah, Mars Cataphrons get. Yeah, they're not core. So, like, like would I mean, full rerolls, which means, you know, attacking, or I'm sorry, shooting and melee. But the only units that you want to shoot and then get into melee are Corpus Scotty and, like, Infiltrators. I just. He's just not there. Yeah. Do you think uh, if they just reduce the points on him a bit, would he be a bit better? Does that fix him? Maybe. Maybe if he goes to 150. Because you can take him in the Supreme Command attachment. He's hard to move. Um, and he can heal itself. Um, he does seem not terrible in combat with the Arc Scourge. So the Arc Scourge is, is okay. Um, the problem is that he himself is not core, so he's not giving himself rerolls. Uh, four attacks is just not enough. Um, oh, his Mecha Dundroids don't actually add anything. That's sad. they add they add two d six. Yeah, but they don't at strength they, five, yeah. no AP. Yeah, so you're averaging. To... Yeah, you're averaging seven attacks. You're hitting six of those. You're wounding guardsmen on threes, Ugh. so you're you're killing an extra like two guardsmen with the hives. Yeah, uh, I think he might still be able to find some home, but it's it's. It would much have harder. to be. It would have to be in like a priesty kind of list. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a cool video. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I, again, I love the model. Um, maybe. Yeah. I think. I think if he went down to one fifty, maybe, but. Right now, it's like I'm just slamming manipulus and marshals and doing the exact same thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean the other the the basic HQ choices are just so good. 
Manipulus. Oh, very good. Very Manipulus Marshall. Like oh yeah, even even the even the baby no even baby engine seer has a has a job. Yeah. I mean, even the engine seer can like turn one, um, give plus one to hit on the fighter jet that has like last cannons and stuff. Send send him out. Go for it, and then turn two. He's like, all right, what's around me? I got a got a doom call. I like to hit on twos or a. Um, and I, I mean, he can do it on a um, on a single chicken. That's not bad either. I mean, you've got you've got options with the engine seers. What like thirty points, fifty points, something like that. Uh, I think he yeah, but I think he has he only targets one of the chickens. He can't target the whole unit. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, but you know, uh, it could be enough. Plus, could be enough. I mean, if you're using him for like the airplane turn one, I just haven't had a use for the. Engine Seer or the Techno Boy. I've just been Marshall, Marshall, and uh, yeah, I forgot about the Techno Archaeologist. That guy, I like him just because I like Cataphrons and I like being able to perform an action and still shoot. It's it's really really good. Um, the the problem is is that um, you're shooting with Cataphrons and that just doesn't feel great. Eh, I don't know. I I, I, I I I've been trying to make the breachers work. Uh, I just the, the the no access to rerolls just feels really bad. I mean, I mean, this this is coming from running Mars. So I used to be able to reroll all failed hits with breachers, and now I don't. And it's like, oh, it doesn't feel great. What about uh, Cataphron destroyers? What's your opinion of the Gravcan ones? Because that one's a contentious one. That one seems like people either think. So how many hard. points? How many points is Gravcan and destroyer? Uh, pretty cheap, actually. Fifty. No, I think they're like forty. Forty. Yeah, they're, uh, let's see, what are they? That's going to be, I think, the, uh, the, the true test 40. is what? Without 40 the flamer. points. So with the, with the, uh. I'm a big fan of the flamer, too. Yeah. Um, well, they only go up to 45 with the flamer. All right, so 45. I don't know, you're hitting on fours. But you get ignore the move. Shots. You get to ignore the heavy penalty twice, though. So that's pretty good. Once for being a biker, once for having a rule just for it. How great is that? <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, though, five shots at strength five, three AP, two damage against uh, Marines or anything of a three plus save. I think they're. I think they, they can take I out think, a lot of things. And they the, the their saving grace is turn one, they have a two up with the shouts on. Yep. So. I mean, three of them aren't bad. And then if you're like the, the thing, I think one of your viewers asked the question is what do you think is going to happen to daddy Olus? Um, if daddy Olus sticks around preachers and destroyers become aggressively better, like doubly better. If daddy Olus pieces out, um, I, think it's have to he's, I have to assume he's gone. Why would they not do it? And I don't know. I figured they would have done it already. Um, That's true, but they reused the model for something else. So they did just straight up reuse the model, right? So yeah. it's really weird. Um, I mean, that could have also just been someone who went, "Oh, we need a picture for this thing. What do we use?" Oh, the uh, what is what is the Deolosis called anyway? Like, uh, isn't Deolosis? Deolosis is a name. Is the named character version of the type? Yeah, but I mean, like, what is he like in lore? Does he have like a title? Or is Daedalus' title? Daedalus is his name, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure the lore. I know he's doing some shenanigans around Blackstone, I think. Yeah. Uh, may, it might be Blackstone. It might. There, he came in a box set from Barnes & Noble. I converted my yeah, own. Yeah, uh, like, arena box set, but I'm just, I'm curious, is he, was he just called a techno-archaeologist, and that's why they did that? I think, yeah, I think he yes, probably was. He was, yeah. yeah I'm looking at the, uh, the uh, arena box set, the Blackstone Fortress Arena. So that's probably literally what happened was they said, we're making a technologist, maybe not a named one. And then they said, oh, we have this asset and we're going to reuse it. So they, could be, they couldn't leave him in, potentially. If they leave him in, I think destroyers and breachers become insanely just, just straight up good. Like uh, now you have destroyers as a platform that just go, hey, hit you on threes, wound you on threes. Every six up save is a dead Marine. Um but if but if he's gone, I don't know if destroyers make the cut. Um, hitting on four just feels bad. Um, 
and then the, when the rest of your army can just easily, very, very easily hit on twos. I'm not. I don't know. I, I want. I want. I like the Catafrons. I have like 15 breachers on my shelf right now. Um, I want. I want to make them work. I'm just struggling with that four up. Four up. Yeah. Just read a comment that said, uh, "Have call buff an army made up of entirely of transvectors and radium dragoons." <laughs> yeah. You don't even need to put anything in transvectors. You just. You just use the auto explode stratagem on them. Kapow. <laughs> It's my uh it's like my secret strategy with uh Death Guard Rhinos. If you put a combine plasma on them, you can blow it up turn one. Oh yeah. Remember when you, they were doing that at the uh, the uh, end of eighth there where you'd zoom up a rhino, um you'd shoot both combo profiles so that you'd be at minus one to hit. You'd shoot an Eldar airplane so that like a four would blow you up, hop your berserkers out, three it was fun stuff. Good times. Um yeah, no, it's, it's it's definitely hard um, to imagine where the Catafrons fit in, but I do think they will probably find a home. Um, I've seen a lot of people doing a lot of creative things with them, and I think one thing that's kind of overlooked is, um, I always mention this as the defense cohort, um, it's a very restrictive army, it's a very small army, but being able to shoot in combat with the destroyers the Catafron Destroyers with the Stratagem, uh, that makes them a lot harder to lock up into combat. And in addition to that, with the uh, Warlord trait that it lets you deep strike a unit of Electro Priest because you have no transports, that also gives them a little more legs to stand on. Do you running nothing but Electro Priests and, cat and uh, Catafrons and Castellans? You know. Can you run Castellans in that too? Yeah. So it's basically anything that mm. has canicles. Because it's it's non skatari units, so all the vehicles are gone essentially, except for uh, Castellans. Um, I mean, they have obsec. There are worse things in the world than a T five body with obsec. Well, it's a T five um, body with uh, disgusting resilient as long as it's on the objective. Potentially it's not T6 bad either with uh, with a Grappina. I mean, if 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 you if you lean that hard into it, uh, you deserve it. Good, like, <laughs> go for it. That just seems like a lot of steps. It does. Um, but with techno archaeologists, they can perform actions. Yeah, who need, who needs Katari when you can <laughs> use these big boys? Uh, it could work. I mean, I think I think the Admet Codex is strong enough that you can go a little off the wall and still be okay. Um, I just like Katari, so I'm not. Yeah, it's I'm not really going to pass up Rangers in a uh, Vanguard. Yeah, I think I think really and even and flyers and transports yeah. and red stockers and and chickens and all these other. Awesome. If we had that, get. if we had that old specials attachment where it's just like straight up one CP plus one to hit, ugh, <laughs> sign me up. Then now we're talking. But um, without access to rerolls, I just don't think the plat again. Like I really like the plasma idea. I really like Ryza, so I think that'd be sweet. But without any access to rerolls, it just doesn't. It just feels uh, bad. I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm really not sold on plasma destroyers. Uh, I, I just I like if it was the old Ryza stratagem. Yes, but the new one just doesn't plus do it. One wound, plus, one, plus one damage. Uh, is it plus one to wound? I think it's just plus one damage. The new one's plus one damage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's just not enough. Yeah. I mean, three damage plasma sounds super cute, but it's like... But the other problem is, is you uh, end up in that weird situation where the plasma does not feel particularly better than the grav. No, not really. I mean, strength eight's great. Um, but the problem is, like, if you're shooting five destroyers, math says you're losing a destroyer. Yeah. So you're paying 40 points to shoot. Like, that can't be right. Yeah, you're paying more. That. Yeah, like, well, you're, you're paying for because it's just going to die. I think it's like, it goes up to... Oh, goes that's to right. The, the, it, the friggin' plasma's a ton of points. Yeah, so that's that's where the, the problem comes in. Is that you're getting variable shots, so you're actually getting potentially less shots. Uh, well, on average, you're getting less shots than the uh, grav cannons. Yeah, I just, I just, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, grav cannons could be okay though. The one damage against like uh, raiders does kind of scare me. Um, they just plink, plink, plink doesn't feel that great. Um, but we'll see. Uh, the ability to shoot and perform actions and the technologist gets a really nice block out. Uh, Twelve inch bubble. Could be, could work. Um, I just don't think you build your army around it. Yeah, I, I think that's one thing that um, is probably going to trip up a lot of people is that 
Cataphrons went from being their own army to being part of an army. Yeah, I mean, we yeah, like with the Call Star, you could just be like, here's 15 breachers. We're hitting 75% of the time. Every failed save against a vehicle is D6 damage. Um, so yeah, it went from being like, this is what we're running to like, yeah, like you said, this is a, a niche that we're using, and that's all it is. Do you think they'll ever... Well, no, I mean, the, I was going to say, do you think they'll ever remove the core uh, option from um, Call, but uh, from the lead to prayer, but looking at lead and prayer, sounds like it's probably intended for priests. I just, yeah, I mean, what I do think, if, I mean, it's a super long shot, but they go, oh, yeah, we meant to give Cataphron's core, yeah. But I don't think I don't think that's gonna happen. They probably uh, had it at some point, but they definitely did. They absolutely yeah, had core at some point. Uh yeah, the way a lot of things are worded. They were also definitely infantry at some point. Uh, because you have the, the stupid uh rule that's staring me in the face, telling me that they can move without penalty and shoot, and it's like, Yep, I know. That are bikers, no need to say it's special. Um but I think Ah, it's so frustrating looking at Call's abilities. I was like, oh, Call can find a home with uh, Cataphrons, and I'm reading it, all of it has core. Good. Totally, like, that's, that's, that's what where... they need to do. They need to take core off of him. Or give it to Cataphrons. Um, yeah. Again, they obviously in one draft had it, because there's, what, one, two Warlord traits that literally only affect Electro Priests. Yeah, and like uh, and... in Caradon, the, uh, the Stratagem that gives a terrain feature... Um, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but uh, it gives Cataphrons, or not Cataphrons, but gives whatever units are stationed at train feature cover, and Cataphrons were apparently infantry or something at the time, or core, and it doesn't even work with them anymore. No, it doesn't work, yeah, and you're like, okay, so why would I take, again, with 100, so you take, you take three destroyers at Plasma, um, and you're just like, wow, okay, so that was like oh, nearly enough points to buy me 20 Vanguard that'll kill monsters just as effectively. Or 20 Rangers, which will kill tanks just as effectively. I just I just don't know. I just I just don't don't really understand. Uh sadly, because again, I like the models. I like the I like the big beefy chonky boys. I like the breachers thunder hammer they have. Uh hitting on fours is just not, That's not the it. Thunder Hammer though is uh pretty spicy, especially with the arc rifle. Yeah, it's a cheap. It's a super cheap, and and I feel like it'd be an all star in a lot of codexes. Um, but with us, we just have a lot of stuff to do. They're just super durable. Oh Except, yeah, I, I think I want to take probably not gripping a detachment. Uh, throw some cataphrons in there. Make yeah, T six, T six, T six, one up, turn one. Yeah, put some infiltrators right. and in, uh, what's it called? And uh, a gripping a detachment as well. Just have them get that AP one and set to defend. Yeah, they might. I mean, set to defend on breachers is a big deal, right? They can set to defend, right? Uh, let's find out. I mean, they're I never can, remember what's going on. Oh, can set to defend is set to defend forty k is. I don't think. Oh, infantry units can hold steady or set to defend. Gross. Well, hold on, but this says hold on. Did I did Agrippina? Okay. Okay. Oh, well, that sounds worded. It seems like it's a loophole. Uh, that might not be a bad way to run them. Uh, that's interesting. Each time a unit enemy unit declares charge, if it's not, yeah, it can. So, so yeah, you o- you could Overwatch on fives with them, which isn't bad, or you can hit on threes in melee, which is definitely the the way to roll. Because yeah. now you're hitting on now you're hit now you're space now you're doing better than space rains with thunder hammers. <laughs> Yeah, That's not yeah, that might be that might be the sauce. Your your top uh, six hitting on threes, two plus save. That gets, that gets and then you can and then you have mechanical options, minus one to hit in close combat. Um which is a big deal. Like minus one to hit with T six, it's like oh So just like two five mans of uh Gatafron breachers. Hey man, that I mean that that could be it. That that adding plus one to hit that is the only way to give them plus one to hit. Yep, and then there's <laughs> your then that's your uh, patrol detachment uh, troop choices. Then you get whatever else you want to give the uh, extra bonus to. 
you can even put the rangers in there because uh you know getting them in range and then um activating the stratagem to give them rapid fire so now with, they're uh, rapid with, firing um, four with a manipulus at minus three yeah yep. minus barf three that's eight. gross all right well hey i mean if we're going deep on uh deep on cataphrons we got some uh holy orders oh yeah that effect that's one that of those things like... I still haven't fully wrapped my head around either, just because there's so um, much to digest. So the whole the best holy order, uh, in my opinion, by far is is uh, low guy, um, which is ignore AP one and two. Uh, that's insane. That's just nuts on Skatari, on dragoons, oh. on um, any core unit. You're just going, oh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to take our three ups. Thank you. Um, two ups potentially. Then, two, yeah, a lot of times two ups, um, and then so that's that's and good. You're wounding I, me on fours. So on, in Lucius, you're wounding me on fours. Yeah, on on I'm Lucius, it's insane. Dude, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, you're wounding me on fours. I'm ignoring AP one and two. I'm getting a save if it's one damage. So yeah, I had two up saves against Lightning Claws today, and it's just like oh, eight points of model barf. Um. <laughs> And it's a twenty man squad that benefits. And from it's this. a twenty man squad that auto passes morale if it's on an objective. And, and auto wounds you on fours. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> it's just the, the buffs get. And then I really enjoy the and free CP. <laughs> oh yeah, it gives you cancer as well. Yeah, it's just like what is what do these not do? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's really hard to play against somebody who hasn't read the Admet Codex because it sounds like you're cheating a lot. <laughs> Is you're like, I forgot to tell you, your minus one strength and toughness. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I ignore everything you do. And it's like, oh, oh, like, I forgot to tell you, all my Skatari ignore cover for five points. Excuse me? What? <laughs> it's one of those things where it's just like, oh, yeah, I, I, I teleport a unit of uh, Vanguard Rangers next to you. Oh, what do they do? Well, you can pick up your models now and... Uh, I'm going to spend, spend I'm going to spend, I'm going to spend zero CP since my Artisans gets me a Warrior Stratagem for free. Uh, and they're just going to die. <laughs> uh, just, so, uh... shenanigans you can pull is absolutely... A lot of shenanigans. A lot of shenanigans. So, low guy's really good uh, for the defensiveness. Artisans, turn one artisan always just goes straight to the advanced part because now he gets a core unit plus one strength and range, which is bonkers to throw it on Rangers. Rangers at strength five guns are, it's just ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Um, so turn one always, always, always immediately go to uh, the, always immediately go to the advanced part of artisans. And now the catch is, is that the galvanic field ability for the manipulus um, is not an aura. You can use it while you do the action. Normally actions shut off auras. So Dominus does not get to do his reroll once to hit, mm -hmm. but manipulus is not an aura. Yep. So you can, you can activate your action and then still give your buffs. And the next turn you're giving super, super dirty buffs. Oh yeah. Super dirty buffs. The like, manipulus seems like one of the strongest HQs right now. Yep, I'm bringing two in every list. Yeah, I can see that. Um, even again, even the relic, the one that does mortals on him, is just nuts. Yeah, I, I might, I might try it out. I mean, it's, it's not crazy to be like, all right, five shots, and hey, take four mortals. What about the um, the sulfur hounds? We haven't really touched on those. I mean, I think they have a home, but uh, they're Let's competing with a lot of stuff. They're competing with a very popular slot, and they're competing with raiders almost point for point. But they did um, see play at the end of uh, the 8th edition codex. They were starting to see more and more play. So they were definitely showing up. Um, well, for Hounds are super strong in Metallica, where you can extend that rad saturation, correct? That 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 works yeah. on... It's, I just they, think it's... Uh, yeah, I don't have the, uh, the Caradon book next to me, but uh, I'm pretty sure it does. I think it just extends the radium. Let me, let me grab the book and I'll double check. Yeah, so they auto advance 6, which is great uh, for 1 CP. So the problem is, and their pistols turn to assault, correct? Yes. Yeah. So you've got a sulfur breath, a phosphor pistol. You get two problem, pistols. You get two pistols per guy. Hey, yeah, you do. Hmm. So you're averaging 3.55 and a half. 
So four, about four and a half hits at strength four for not that many points. Five up in Vaughn. I mean, the reason they lost out to Raiders before was the Raiders were super cheap for the stats, and they also had Tactical Bleeko, which Silver Hounds didn't. Ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. But, um... Uh, Silver Hounds with pistols, I mean... Raw power. You know what? Hold on, what about Silver Hounds and Agrippina? That's exactly what I was just thinking, is going to minus three in combat with the pistol. Oh, the Sulfur Breath, yeah. Jeez. Mm Um... It only goes to minus two on the uh, uh, phosphor pistols, but ignore. Scott. Yeah, um, the fact that they also really are okay with um, they're okay going to the um, plus they're punchy. Yeah, they're right. Into, they're not so they're, really they're, they're, combat. Right, so they're okay going to the punchy doctrina and going to three up weapon skill, four up ballistic skill because most of their shots are auto hitting. Maybe, um, maybe that's the thing. Maybe the, if you're running um, Agrippina with them, you run these guys instead of the Infiltrators. I mean, they, they are not bad. I mean, like like point for point, they're they're pretty efficient. Uh, okay, um, so the, the uh, Metallica Stratagem only works on Vanguard and specifies Vanguard. Okay, great. Well, not great, but good to know. Yeah, but I mean, uh, um, Red's I traded Forge World. Think, also do it. I think they're not bad. Like a squad of three that can just... Uh, they're strong. They're a sleeper unit, yeah. I think. Well, I think a squad be... of three just to just to go. Hey, you charge my boys. Uh, come get come get some rad sickness. Yeah, um, uh, I mean, yeah. No, I think I think they're good. Uh, they have a lot of melee. I, I think the best way you're gonna get the best use out of them is gonna be when you're in the fight doc. When you're in the punchy doctrina, and you're going to weapon skill three, and you can give them plus one strength. So now they're at strength five against like Death Guard or something like that. Yeah, um, they go to toughness. Well, the Death Guard go to toughness four. Toughness four, yeah. Um, the problem that I have with both Raiders and Silver Hounds is they just get picked up by heavy bolters. But, um, but hey, I'm, I I think Silver Hounds could be okay. They do have a five plus well, level too. Five plus level is hot stuff. So they yeah. they get they they got a thunder. A thunder hammer charges them. They, you know, get bopped twice. One lives. He gets some pistol action. Um, yeah, I think they could be okay. Um, I feel like they're missing that cute uh, stratagem for the just themselves, though. Um, just like like the raiders have their oblique. Uh, like if these guys had. Um, well, I think they have it now, don't they? Don't they make it for both? It, it no longer does the thing where it auto fails enemy charges. But uh, tactical bleak, or is it? I'm looking for it too. Um, uh, no, it's still raiders. Okay. Yep, service raiders. Um, yep. Huh. Kind of a bummer that they don't have uh, a fancy thing just for them. But yeah, the Metallica one really should have worked with them. Still, it's still just a vanguard on top of a horse, horse dog. I mean, yeah, no, absolutely. It would make sense. Like, I get why it doesn't work with the Dragoons, because, number one, Dragoons, I don't think, have that. But, number two, they're all the way up on top of that chicken, so they don't reach the ground. These guys are, like, a couple feet away. Maybe Dragoons only have cancer flyers. How about that? Yeah, there you go. If a Dragoon's next to a flyer, it re- uh, reduces its toughness and strength. Uh, yeah, I think I think Sulphur Hounds, uh, you can't go wrong with them. Yeah, no, they're like, definitely really strong. Like you're never gonna be like, man, I'm I'm bummed. I spent fifty points on silver hounds. You're like, that was probably a pretty a pretty good fifty points. Yeah, no, it's like sixty five. I think with everything with a unit of three, but still, I mean, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, not not the like, end of the world. I feel like if there were any other army, though, they'd be like an auto include. <laughs> exactly. Just, yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna be the theme. Yeah. Also, if, if hordes get in pop, if hordes get popular, that phosphor blaster blaster carbine getting six shots feels okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah, that, the, the, that was what I was to ask was uh, if you think the Carbine has gotten any more relevant. Um, I still think it's not quite there, but I think it's way better than it was before. How many points is it? Like 10? Uh, let me see. I think it was just looking at it. I think it probably is. And 10 feels about right. Maybe that's just that just feels like it might be just a yeah, little too 10. much. Uh, it's just not. Um, I mean, it's, it's strength 5, 2d3, so average 4 shots, 18-inch range. 
Uh, ignores cover and it's a blast. Oh, it's a blast. Ignores, it ignores dense cover. Yeah. Not not the same as cover. Oh yeah, that's true. Which is which is kind of awkward, considering that sterilizers ignore cover. Um. Yeah, hmm. that's one thing I don't like about the. Uh... The rules. Um, I like the fact that they determine different types of cover. I don't like the fact that they're keyworded in such a way that you can easily misread that. Right. Like, why does my my flamer that shoots white hot phosphorus like that should just melt terrain too? You think? But uh, yeah, very sad. They probably need some way of again. It's the same problem as in Castlands. Why do you have two weapons that have almost the same exact name but completely different profiles? Okay. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I think so. Again, if you're if you're starting out at Mech, uh, and you built three sulfur hounds, I think you'll be fine with them. I think they'll make they'll make your cut most of the time. I'm kind of tempted now to throw them in that or grip and a detachment. <laughs> I, I it, it keeps on gaining steam. Like yeah, like the more I think about it, the more I'm like I'm, I'm I'm selling myself on this. I didn't need to sell myself on it, but it's a go. Uh, then again, maybe yeah, they're they're no, rising too. Bad. They have no problem going into combat. No, Ryza, Ryza would be okay with them too. No. Yeah, Ryza would not be the worst. I mean, they are core, and they can get data to other keyword. So, right, they can take a... No, they can't. No. Interesting that, that Raiders can take a data to other, but not Sulphur Hounds. That's actually a pretty important difference. That's pretty big. Um, you can obviously move Mexico to a flyer, but now we're talking... Uh, they keep a lot of them with Dragoons. Stuff. They do keep up well with Dragoons if you run them both. And then again, that minus one toughness and strength can make yeah. a big deal. Hmm. You run them next to each other, you run the guys into a knight. That's one dead knight. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. So here's an interesting question that came in. It says, um, uh, it was from Ghost of Skyrim. says, I don't really know if it's been discussed yet, but what's the viability of our secretary Peltas and Hoplites in the light of the new codex? Uh, Pasalts are dead, sadly. Um, they don't have obsec, and they're they're worse rangers. Yeah, they um, they were they were kind of comparable to Vanguard in the last edition or rangers, but now I can't see taking them over those. those no, two. so so sadly they're gone. Um, Hoplites are interesting, um, in that they get um, they get Doctrina, so they can be at weapon skill two. Um, they're only what ten points a model, not the worst. A four up me- a four up envil and a melee is kind of cute. Um, I think the biggest like, hit to them is the fact that rust stalkers and infiltrators and dragoons are back. Yeah, for seven points more, do I want a rust stalker? Yeah, I think I do. But they are interesting. Uh, I mean, they have a interesting invulnerable save. They have an interesting uh, also their their arc isn't. As good as everybody else's arc. Their arc isn't wound vehicles on a 4+, plus for a damage of flat 2 or 3. It's just wound da- It's just uh, damage of D3, which I'm just kind of over. D3 damage. Um, yeah, but I, like, I wouldn't really be... We have so much vehicle answers that I'm never, I'm never in the position where I'm really thinking of them as an anti-vehicle option. And what you could do is they're ridiculously cheap and on a power level standpoint. So you can deep strike 20 of them for one CP. And you could, you could try it. Um, I, I just, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure they're there. Sadly. Models are cool. Flavor is cool. Um, yeah, just yeah. Yeah, I do. I, like, a, I do like the models for the hoplites. Yeah, I just, I just don't think they're there. Sadly, again, with with the rest of the codex being so powerful, it's hard to look at a at a unit that's not operating at maximal efficiency and saying, "All right, let's run it." If that makes sense, I hope that doesn't kill your dreams, Mister Skyrim. <laughs> Someone said, uh, Papa Judas said, uh, I put my Radium Giselle Dragoons next to my Sulphur Hounds for the data together. There you go. Look it's a at that. Five point data tether. That's what the uh, Radium Giselle Dragoon is. Yeah, but now why is the gel- Giselle, why is the Sniper Dragoon running up the field with a, <laughs> now you just give him a lance. Ah. No, he's, he's just a, he's just a data tether. 
<laughs> that's how we that's how you get around that restriction. <laughs> that's how we <laughs> You know what? I won't crush your dreams entirely. I think you can do I think you can do ten of these in a boat and be okay. Um yeah, you could probably include them. Uh, again, uh, if, you put, if you run rough stockers, you're just going to be like, oh, these things slap. Yeah. Uh, again, we're also coming in from a, a bit more of a competitive thing. So if any of the people listening are not really playing in tournaments, we're really playing in kind of the tabletop, you'll be fine with a lot of these units. Yeah, absolutely. Again, you, you can't, you have so much strength in the Admet Codex that if you just, if you venture off track a little bit and go with something, I think you're okay. I feel like you can... That's the nice thing about also having a really powerful codex, especially in, like, um, less less optimized games. You can definitely get away with a lot of the kind of cuter stuff and just take it and play around with it if you want and then go from there, essentially. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That, that, that's that's totally, totally where we're at is we can run some suboptimal stuff and just make up with it with raw power of rules. Yep. And... Um, no, it was, it was, yeah, I think the the more I think about it, though, the more interesting sulfur rounds become. Yeah, I think, I think Agrippina is definitely where they want to be. Um, Lucius, again, is, is pretty good all around. The problem that I'm having with Lucius with the Raiders, they just get heavy boltered. Yeah. Um, but I think if you, I think again, like if they go out, they grab objectives, they're kind of hard to charge just because you, you roast them. Um, whereas Raiders spend two CB to be unchargeable, but they'll a lot of times give up their objective. Yeah, and they can still mm-hmm. redeclare a charge if they're in range of anything mm-hmm. else, which is a big right. Thing. Which is a big difference, yeah. Um, so I don't think it's the worst. Again, I think I think if you like them, the models are super cool. Yeah. So go for it. And I, I, again, like I said, in at the at the end of the last codex, um, we we're starting to see multiple units of Raiders escorted by multiple units of Sulfur Hounds. So. Um, I think it's just one of those units that just takes a little more time to work its way into the meta than anything that's else. That's not bad either. I mean, that that's not like they both they both get in combat. They kind of help each other out. Um, I do I do think the dragoon and sulfur hound thing though is pretty cool. I mean, I don't think it's bad, especially like um, the taser lance dragoon, obviously. <laughs> just oh, uh, obviously, but like the idea the idea of making like a space marine wounded wound uh you have minus one to hit on a dragoon. Because of the incense aura, yeah, and then and then uh, strength four wounding dragoons on sixes feels nice, feels okay. Because strength four goes to strength three from the cancer aura, um, could be a play. Actually, here's an interesting one because someone, um, Papa Judas mentioned the uh, transvector. What, uh, yesterday we were talking about this a little bit. You mentioned that Siegler had a list that used one, I believe. Yeah, Siegler was running a Metallica list with like seven airplanes, one of them being a transvector to hold the Metallican lung relic on an engine seer who also had the Ash Runner Warlord trait. The lung and the Ash Runner are both found in Warzone Karakadon, or whatever it's called. Ash Runner gives him a movement of like 10. Uh, Metallica Lung gives him a, any if he's within three inches of anybody, we roll all failed wounds for any Metallica unit you know, that shoots it. So you zoom the plane up with your air force. Nobody wants to shoot a stupid transvector. Um, he hops out the next turn, sprints towards him, and you want dead, and you just kill it with fire. Uh, it's cute. It's a little memey. Um, could work. I mean, the air force is super strong. Like the three fighter, three bombers. You just kill whatever can kill them and then just fly around the board and they can't be they're really hard to hide from because they can always just double pivot and they can also just hover so normally you with like uh single pivot boys you can kind of hide you can kind of plan out their next move duck around buildings no big deal but the straight up double pivot or hover is like oh we're not hiding from you yeah, I mean that's that's one thing I probably didn't consider um, when I was taught when I was thinking of the transvector is just the ability to deliver some of these really short range abilities like um, ride saturated, uh, forge world, the metallic and long, uh, even just the rad saturation over rad saturation ability, so you can do rerolls minus one toughness minus one strength within six inches. Um, I think that's what he took. I think he took five vanguard with it because it holds six. 
Yeah. Or you so can five. Even, yeah. You can even put the um, instead of Ash Runner, you can put the other trait on the Engine Seer, the one that debuffs any non-Metallica units with minus one toughness, because that's all you would probably really also, care about. It's also a, and you can auto advance the Homeboy six, so yeah. you can you have a twelve inch threat range. That's not bad. I mean, you you kind of got to build around it. Um, it's gonna be hard to get the angles always right because you can pivot ninety mid motion, but. You well, you pivot to start two inches. So, well, yeah, but turn one, you just zoom up at the middle of the board, fifty inches, and you, you have a chaff launcher on it, and you have seven other airplanes that they want to shoot. It's cute. Um, I don't recommend it because it's like seven hundred dollars for just the planes, <laughs> and now you transport six planes, and I don't want to do that. Well, transporting seven, seven, seven. yeah, tra transporting two planes is already driving me insane. So, uh. You know, but hey, it's 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 got legs. If you want to try it out and TTS, that's what I would do. It's definitely something interesting, and I mean, I, I think that's something that's really cool is that stuff like that does pop up where you're just like, this thing you thought would never be useful all of a sudden shows up, and you're like, oh, because uh, I, I think pretty much everyone discounted it up to that point, and even then, it's still a little on the cuter side, but it's definitely meme. -y, yeah. But I mean, I could see it being. Uh, being if the if the meta goes like chargey hordes, just u using but then it's just then you just bring bombers. Like I was just trying to think like the move block and get in the way, and it's like just pay ten more points for a bomber. Yeah, transvector is just not not quite gonna cut it unless you're delivering. Like yeah, uh, you're delivering something um, big. You're you're delivering the metal basically the metallic and lung. Yeah, I think is what I think it was what you have to deliver with it. Well, can you put? No, nah, that's too stupid. I was going to say, can you put two characters in their metallic and long and bionics of veneration and then give minus one to hit and uh, rerolls, but then well, why are you giving a minus one to hit? That seems a little too too goofy. Yeah, yeah and then it's like the, the thing blows up and you roll two ones and you're like, oh. <laughs> well, there you go. Hold my characters have died. <laughs> Problem solved. Is there a way to put a plasma gun on it? Uh, yeah, blow it up at the end of its move phase. Um, I mean, technically, you could move it under twenty, and then it dies, right? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't played with <laughs> aircraft in a long time. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend transvectoring. Uh, It'd be fun to make a list to see how quickly you can destroy your own models. <laughs> Just... Well, you auto blow up something next to it when your opponent kills it. Drop some mortals on it. <laughs> Just. I've seen that happen one time where uh, it was some Admech battle report, and like he just had like dragoons and castellans just keep exploding, so it caused these chain reactions where he did more damage to himself with auto explodes than anything else. I mean, it can happen. I mean, the auto explode. Sorry, not auto explode. Is... It was just sixes on the uh, explosion roll. Yeah, I mean, it can happen. We have a lot of vehicles; they all can do plinky damage. I mean, all it takes is like one explosion to kind of just start rocking you. I, I had a plane explode in my backfield today. It felt real bad. <laughs> Not ideal. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, I think he killed his own call by accident with the robots exploding in chain reaction. Oh, that's, <laughs> not, that's not it. That's so sad. Yeah, it's just like, well, I guess, I guess that just happened. <laughs> so, um, but no, the auto explode thing is that so strategy? Yep, it's super strong. Yeah. Can do it for can do it for zero CP with a low guy, holy order. Um, yeah, super strong. Um, yeah, that's something that's kind of interesting. I'm yeah, you know, I I use it on my bomber in probably eight out of ten games because you're just like, oh, I can I can clip one unit on an objective and a character that they sent to go punch out of the sky. Oh, yeah, sure, I'll I'll spend the CP to do an average of four mortal wounds. Sure. Um. I, I find it super good and just or you just place it in the middle of their army and you're like, Okay, what do you got? Oh, you're running little baby squads of uh crusaders and sisters, or you're running um you're running pretty valuable things like Raiders and Jukari, like you can just you can clip a lot of things. Um so offering up a bomber to uh to die, that base is massive. <laughs> yes, uh, especially with the, the wingspan. Oh yeah. Well, the, so you measure the explosion from the base, but the oh, base okay. is the base is huge. Like it's it's ridiculous. So you can, and the explosion is 
Um, the explosion is six inches. So you can, I mean, that's a 12 inch, 12 inch radius on the explosion on a, on a fatty, what, six inch long base. Like that's, you can, you can catch, a, you can catch a lot of things that a lot of things on fire. And it does D3 mortal wounds too. It's not like one mortal wound on smaller vehicles. So that's good. Yeah. So 130 points, drop some bombs, go, Hey, I'm next to five squads. Do you want to really move your full movement out of range or do you want to just eat some mortals so i really i'm a big fan of double bomber uh that stratagem is part of it yeah it seems to be uh gaining a lot of traction as the double bomber uh strider raptors are also showing up but not quite as often as the uh bombers are yeah mars mars strata raptors are super strong uh you're re-rolling both you're rolling two shots in the right canicle uh, so that's both your last cannon shots. You're rerolling one wound and you're rerolling one damage, and then you just have a bunch of uh, a bunch of stubborn fire to go with it. Uh, yeah, Mar- Mars Stratoraptors very strong. Agrippina not so bad either. Get right up next to them and go pew 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 with true. your minus one AP stubbers. Yeah, because you're 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 pretty much in half range very easily with the flyers. Same very reason easily. Cognus is good. Very. So and that, that so I, Agrippina yeah. detachment's growing. Well, and it's growing, especially if like uh, if uh, LBO or other places release their tables, and they show that there's enough line of sight blocking that you don't have to worry about getting alpha struck. Um, I don't know how much of like the art of war, or other things you're watching, but their tables are dense enough to where there's not a lot of like just straight up shooting people off the board turn one. Yeah. Uh, so like, such if a big that factor of it nowadays. Right, so if that if the if the terrain becomes pretty dense and tournaments start to release their terrain ahead of time and say these are the five, ten, three tables you're playing at, you could uh, you could get away with not Lucius because you don't need the defensiveness if you don't get shot, and just go Agrippina and just shoot around corners and get people like that. That could be a thing. Yeah, I, I think I think we'll see very dense terrain as a whole just because it's. It, again, it solves the Alpha Strike problem, and it lets people go second. Even Lucius going second, as you mentioned, uh, can be a problem with light terrain. So, Yeah, Lucius going, going second, first. very much not Lucius going first. Yeah. Uh, uh, Lucius yeah going obviously, second. once you get all the buffs up, you're, you're not worried, but Alpha Strike is definitely scary if you haven't had the chance to put the buffs up. Yeah, so I'm I'm wondering. Yeah, I, I'm growing on Agrippina as well. We're gonna see if uh, we'll go deep in the tank and see what we can do. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so a couple final questions. We ran a little long today, but that's partially because um, you know I screwed up and this wasn't broadcasting the whole time. But again, once this goes up for anyone who's watching now, you'll see the full like extent of it um, running. Uh, so the first one is always, let's say you're a new player. Um, or if a new player is trying to approach their first event, what what would you recommend for them in terms of getting into their first tournament as someone who's never been in a tournament setting before? Um, so you're rolling up to the tournament. Uh, my advice is to play all three rounds. You're you're put you're paying money to play three rounds of Warhammer. It's hard as an adult to get in three rounds of Warhammer in a day. So if you booked out the time, then spend. Spend the if you booked up the time and you spent the money, commit to three games, even if they don't go so great. Um, go in with an attitude of I'm going to learn a lot and expect to go 0 and 3. Uh, winning a game of Warhammer is very hard. Um, you, they're, they're, it's just a hard thing. You got to remember rules, you got to remember opponents' rules, you got to remember mission rules, you got to remember terrain rules, you got to remember uh, time limits. Like, like it, it's a hard game to play. And if you're not used to the tournament setting uh, and you go in thinking, oh, I, I got this. I'm just going to stroll in. I play, I beat a couple of buddies in their garage. You know, it's, it's just a different beast. Um, so I, before every tournament, I buy a gallon of water at, at the grocery store for a dollar um, and make sure you drink a lot of water. And again, I think it's all about expectations. I think you just go in ready to have fun, ready to learn, and you're going to come away with a good time. But if you, but if you think you're just going to roll on and stop people and you're, you're just not going to enjoy it as much. Um, my first tournament, I think I went on three and that's just what happens. It's a hard, it's a hard thing to get into, but it's uh, once you, once you kind of figure it out and get a couple under your belt, I really, really think it's a great time. 
Yeah, I mean, I fully agree. It's it's definitely one of those things you can't go into expecting to win your first time around. Um, and 40k is one of the most complicated games uh, out there. I, I don't think I don't think it's possible to really solve the meta unless something's evidently broken. Um, but even that, well, probably yeah. Close to it. Well, and even like like you go online and you buy, you know, Nick Natavati's list, or you fig- you know you pay for a service to make you a list, and if you haven't played competitively, you're not going to know what to do. There's just so many moving parts. Um, I mean, we're, ne- we're never going to be like chess on the, just like the balance standpoint, but man, there it is a complicated game, and there is just so much happening, and you're going to forget rules. And you're gonna make massive mistakes, and that's okay. Um, but I, I would I would approach the first your first tournament ready to lose, but ready to learn. Definitely, and I th- I think you know um, if you make tournaments about going there and having fun and making friends, you'll have a much better time than if you go expecting to win every time. You definitely want to aim to win, but at the end of the day, you know there's only gonna be one winner out of fifty to three hundred players. Oh yeah, like you can't like you just gotta try to do better than you did before. Even if that's zero and three the first time and zero and three the second time, you know you score more points, you remember more rules, you do stuff like that, and you just you just work your way up. But people that come in and just go ah right right I, you know I got this. It's like mm, how you're not gonna have fun if that's your attitude. Definitely. And um, so the next question would be. Again, we kind of covered this already a little bit, um, but I don't think anyone saw it at the time. They'll see it on the replay. Um, what would your tip be to someone who's, let's say, just starting out? Maybe they don't have an airbrush yet, but let's say just kind of getting into painting because obviously you do painting, you do painting on a professional level. Um, what would you say is the best way of kind of tackling your first model? Thin your paints way more than you think. So... Uh... If you're buying GW paint, they come out of the pot super thick. Go on Amazon, buy dropper bottles, uh, I just like a couple milliliters, no big deal. Um, I think 10 fits the entire paint pot. I think the paint pot might be 15. Anyway, buy a dropper bottle, um, put a ball bearing or a BB. I bought 1,000 BBs for $10, um, 1,050 BBs for $10. Um, so put a BB in there, uh, buy this thing called, uh, paint thinner or airbrush retardant or airbrush flow improver. And I put 20 drops of that in a bottle with the pot of GW paint, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, pour into dropper bottle and paint with that. Um, you're just going to have a better time. I, I really wish that they would thin their paints for you. Uh, contrast is pretty thin. You don't need to worry too much about that. But if you think you've got a paint mixture and you're a new painter, that, that's good. Go ahead and thin it about 50% more, and, and you'll be in a much better spot. Yeah, I've definitely noticed with Vallejo paints, they're way thinner than Games Workshop, which I like. Um, yeah, buy, buy Vallejo Game Air. They, their color, their Vallejo Game Air, you can find them at Hobby Town. Uh, my local gaming store does not carry them, but Hobby Town and other hobby stores do. Um, um, they're they're harder to get online because they're they uh, the pandemic and all that great stuff, but uh, Vallejo has made painting so much nicer. Um, oh yeah, 100%. If you're if, if but hey, I get it when you're starting out. Uh, sticking there's nothing wrong with just sticking to GW brands. That's totally fine. I mean, I do like the paint pot GWs have because you can just leave it open and use it to paint. But it does. I found that a lot of times I'll get a new paint and it'll already be kind of. A play-doh consistency so i have to mix it down and try to get it back yeah. to like a paint and but that, that's where the uh the airbrush thinner comes in or just cut the paint paint retardant and you just fill it up and uh give it a good shake but yeah dropper bottles and thin your paints and you're just going to enjoy painting so much more awesome and um i always ask this as well um what's your uh favorite model could be admic could be otherwise <sighs> What a very hard question. Uh, <laughs> right favorite now, AdMech model? Uh, favorite Admech model, I think is the, uh, I think is the Raider. Uh, the the idea of like this cowboy and like a bunch of robes just on this pony is very cool. Uh, favorite model right now is actually the Witch Hunters for Age of Sigmar. 
the I don't know if you've seen them, the old guy with the gun and the girl with the giant crossbow. Oh, okay. Uh, I haven't seen them, but I think I know what you're talking about roughly. I can picture it. And then 40K, uh, man, favorite model in 40K. There's just something cool about the Redemptor Dreadnought, I think. That, that's, the last, that's the last commission model I painted, and I'm, and I'm still looking at it. I really just think the Redemptor Dreadnought is super cool looking. That'll, that'll change every day. That answer will change probably every day. <laughs> I'm with you. I mean, there's so many models, especially when I started painting Admech. There were a lot of things I was like, I don't like this model. And then I painted one, and I was like, I love this. I love everything about this. <laughs> That's like, yeah, like, well, the like, Admech models just have, feel like they have, a, like, a lot of personality. Like, yeah. and especially if, like, you, like, know the lore of, like, the, the Vanguard and the Rangers, the fact that, like, their legs are biotic. I just think it's, they're just super fun to paint. Yeah. The big one for me was Catafrons. I remember looking at them and Electro Breeze too. And I remember looking at them and going, I hate the models, everything about them. And then I painted them and I was like, okay, the Electro Breeze, I'm still kind of lukewarm on, but the Catafrons. Electro Breeze are a bad model. <laughs> yeah, Electro Breeze are a bad model. Uh, <sighs> convert, convert yours out of Necromunda. Convert yours out of Necromunda. <laughs> or the Negavolt Cultist from um, uh, uh, one of the yeah, that'll, that'll, games. No, that'll work too. That'll work too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, oh, kind of, yeah, kind of fronts, though, you look at the model and like kind of boxy, and then you grab it and you're like, oh, this thing is cool. Yeah, there's so much detail. I think that's what it is. Like, once you see all the detail and everything going through it, you just kind of. Iron Striders, too. I'm working on Iron Strider right now, and I was like, oh, this is goofy as hell. Oh, a chicken. What do, I, what do I care about? Chicken locker, and, yeah. And then the more I work on it, the more I'm like, oh, this is this is everything. This is everything that I wanted in a model. <laughs> yeah, no, MX line is very good right now, uh, besides obviously Electro Priest, but. Yeah, it's uh, they've a good grown time. On me a little bit. They're they're not my favorite model, but I don't hate them as much. Uh, I, I think their conventional paint scheme, like on the box here, I'm holding a box of them. I think it's bad. Like I think that hurts their look a lot. But you can paint them so they don't look completely awful. You're a better painter than I am. Then I was not <laughs> a, not able to make them look good. Oh, I yeah, of, uh, the corpus scary at least. The the full grades the, the, the jazz hands. The jazz hands. Ugh. Yeah, come on. They're having a great yeah. time. Look at how happy they are. They're listening to. They do. They, they do. They do look very happy compared to the yeah. robots of uh, the robotic faces of literally everything else. <laughs> so that's true. That's true. Happiest model in uh, in Admech. Uh, yeah. No, I think I think by far the Electro Priests are probably the worst model in the Admech uh, line. Um, yeah, but the Controller is yeah. my favorite one. But oh, it's classic. It's big boxy tank on legs. It's very cool. Well, yeah, we've been going for about um, a little more than two and a half hours now live, um, or well, probably like an hour, hour and a half live, and then the and the rest was uh, private screening, I guess. <laughs> uh, but it'll be up as a replay, so anyone who missed it, they can catch it there. Um, so, where if people want to find you, where can they where can they find you? Uh, best place on Instagram, it's uh, at Matt's Man Bun. So it's M A T T S dot M A N dot B U N uh check out some of my work there uh any questions or any commissions anybody needs done it's a it's a fun place uh i think uh that, that's kind of the only i'm not not a big twitter guy so uh not really a big instagram guy either but yeah, it's 2021 and we gotta we gotta it's make we gotta build a business yeah so yeah i'll um i'll post up um the, a link to your instagram in the description of this video once it goes up as I'd, a re- i'd appreciate that yeah and... that'd be great uh, yeah, if you want, you can also post um, uh, on my uh, subreddit there. You can find it in the link of any of the, or I can send it to you on Discord. You can post a, um, uh, what's it called, like a commission link there as well if you'd like. There's not that many people who view it, but people do stop by from time to time. And if anyone sees it, they might be interested in it. Or if you want to just show off your work there, that'd be cool with me as well. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, so thank you for stopping by. Um, we'll have to do this again sometime, and hopefully next time I, I don't screw it up. But uh, no, 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 you did fine. Everybody's gonna go back and listen to it because they're just so they're just so intrigued. <laughs> Definitely. But yeah, uh, thank you for being on, and thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, this video will be up shortly. Usually it takes a little bit. I just do a few minor edits and then upload it back up as a replay, and you guys can watch everything we talked about at the beginning. We talked about some practice games uh, Matt has played through and some of his history as a Warhammer player, as well as some things about airbrushes and other things like that. If you guys want to learn about that, there'll be timestamps on everything, so you kind of get an idea of um, where everything is. That's part of what the editing process uh, involves. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in, and have a great night.
Bye.